Welcome to Briançon in France for the lead World Cup on the IFSC circuit. My name is Matt Groom and I'm joined by Campbell Harrison here in the commentary box. Hello, hello. Campbell, it is lovely to have you back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Look, you didn't make it through to semi-finals. Obviously, unlucky. I'm so sorry. And you were very close, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really close. I basically had my best and worst routes of the season in one event. Um, and I, after the first one, I thought it was totally blown. And then the second one actually ended up being, yeah, like really close to the semifinals. So a bit frustrating, but good to like end the season on a good note, I guess. Abs or end the, the European leg. Absolutely. Well, we get you in the box. And man who did make it through to the semifinals is, well, it's his first ever World Cup, Great Britain's Toby Roberts. And I caught up with him after his qualifying run. So I think we're going to go and see what he had to say. A first of anything is special, especially when it's your first World Cup. Toby Roberts from Team Great Britain, this is your first World Cup. So how are you feeling here today? Yeah, well, it feels great. So it's the first, first ever one and I didn't know what to expect. And so I just came in, no expectations and yeah, just climbed. It was great, yeah. Toby, I've known you for a long time. I think 10 when you were doing AB, AB plus, something like that. Yeah, so I think I did my 8A when I was 10, Rain Dogs, I think. And then, yeah, I've always just loved projecting hard stuff. It's just, yeah, I just love it. Well, it's cool to see you progress from that to this. Are you intimidated by the athletes around you? Or by now, is this just part of the scene? Can you handle it? Yeah, I think it's definitely different being around like the top athletes. But in the end, it's just climbing. And yeah, it's, it's just, I just like to climb. So yeah, it, it, it was OK. It was nice. And the roots itself for Quali, certainly. The first one, when you walked onto that stage, what was that feeling like? Yeah, so the first one I was definitely a bit nervous. Yeah, I was um, over pulling a lot and just, yeah, pulling too hard, but luckily it went well, so. And then the second one was more, was more relaxed and was, yeah, they're good roots, so. Toby, I know your dad is a big part of your training and everyday life, and he was there again today. What does your dad's support mean to you? Oh well, yeah, it means a lot. He's there for me with everything. And it's, it's always nice to have him around. He's always supported me, so I always know he's 100% got my back and he wants what's best for me, so it's nice to have him around. <laughs> We're in this position now where we don't know whether you've made it through the semi-finals, but certainly it is a strong performance. Regardless whether you make it through or not, that is a good first World Cup for you. Yeah, well, I'm hoping I make it through. It'll be, I'm not sure, so I'll just wait and see the results, but otherwise I'm happy, so it went well for the first one. So if this is the starting point. What are the building blocks after this? What are you aiming for for the rest of the season and into 2023? Uh, so later I've got uh, Youth World Champs, which I'm really psyched for. And there's the Munich European Champs Senior, which selections are tomorrow. So I'm not sure whether I'm going, but hopefully. <laughs> and then, yeah, later is obviously the Olympic year next year. So I'll be hoping to be in all the World Cups and see what I can do. Awesome. Well, Toby, best of luck for that Olympic qualification and everything that happens. I'm sure everyone at home will be keeping their fingers crossed for you. Yeah, thank you. Well, Toby Roberts did make it through to the top 26 here in Briançon. And in a second, we're going to look at the athletes who have qualified, and there they are. Campbell, you were talking about Oscar. Nice to see him back in a semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. I think he was not feeling like super flowy and in the zone for the first comp, so it's really nice to see him back. And Toby Roberts joins Hamish MacArthur, who qualified in 11th for this final. And Jesse Gruper, I mean, that young man, I mean, what an amazing character he is. Yeah, and absolutely. And asset to the sport. He's super, he's just, he's so friendly. It's so nice to meet someone of his caliber of climbing, who's, who's just so outgoing and nice to everybody around him, for sure. And then Yutong uh, at the top, she hasn't competed for... Well, since 2000, well, hasn't got good results since 2019, so nice to see her back in a semi-final. And at the end, Shian So just beating Yanya Garnbrett, but not by much. I yeah. think it's one, one hold in it. Yeah, I think so. I think just one point. It was definitely a, a close round. I didn't really get to see either of them climb too much, but it'll be nice to see them sort of face off again in the, in the semi-final. Well, we are underway here at the moment. So that is Yutong Yang, Zhang from China. She's starting off, and the uh, routes, the women's on the left, the men's on the right, and Oscar, who we just chatted about, will be underway on the right-hand side of your screen. So, semi-finals time, and Campbell, 
whittling it down to just eight finalists, I always think it's a very tough cut, this one, for 26 to 8. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge jump, like, going from that many people to that small of a, of a group. And it's, sometimes it's such a tight game as well. And, you know, this early on, you can see people come out, climb really strong. It looks like they're going to make it. And then it all of a sudden is completely different, completely changes. So you never really know what's going to happen until you can start like counting down the names and know like exactly who's going to be there. Well, they're all gunning for those final places. Yutung on the left-hand side. She was second in Chamonix in 2019 and then went away a bit. Hasn't had the best of results in 2022. She was 39th in Chamonix this year. So she's trying to rediscover some of that form that she's lost. Yeah, I think it can be hard like when you're really, really young and you see success really early, like so many things in your life can change when you go from being, you know, 15 to 17, 17 to 20, whatever the jump is, you know. So, you know, who knows exactly what might be going, might be going on, but it's cool to see her finding her flow and hopefully she can have another good performance here in the semi-final. And Oscar looking strong at the moment as he's easily through the first part of the roof. And now the wall kicks up here. It's hard to tell from this angle. But Campbell, you, you took a picture from the side on your social media earlier. It's a big overhang. This, yeah, I, I think it's maybe like a 50 degree overhang in the steepest part. And even the parts that look vertical or slab, you know, it's probably 20 degrees overhanging or more in that start section and then around 20 at the top. So yeah, you, you, you're pretty well switched on for the entire route for sure. Well, Oscar, both athletes actually are on the steepest part of the route now. Fairly low down. Coming up to halfway for Oscar. And these pinches, this is where the difficulty starts to get ramped up for the men. And a hard sequence here into that pocket on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see. So up he comes to the sloper. And then this is the move into that dish pocket. Right hand misses it. Yeah, so he did that one a little bit different to what the root setters had told us. Um, he was supposed to take that big black volume, swing your feet around, and that undercling that he came into was just supposed to be an intermediate, so it's supposed to allow you to kind of set up your body in order to move on to the next hold. Um, so I'm not quite sure how they'll go about scoring that. Um, it, yeah, it, it, well, I guess we'll see sort of how the round goes by, and the number of each hold can change based on the successful methods the climbers are using in order to climb the route. So the route setters might think one thing, but then if everybody's doing it another way, that, that uh, route numbering or the scoring of the route is a dynamic process that can change. So that's always, always quite interesting to watch how the athletes choose to sort of solve the puzzle. You know, they're climbing these routes on site. They've never seen them climb before, never touched the holds before. A lot of these holds are actually uh, quite new. Um, so they might not have seen the holds themselves at all. And so, um, you know, getting like a really, really fresh take on how to climb each move. Yeah, I think that's uh, a very good point. It leads us quite nicely on to talk about scoring because if you're new to uh, competition, well, competition sport climbing, really, or lead climbing, this is how it works. You start at the bottom, you try to get to the top. If you manage to get to the final hold, clip the quick draw, that's important, and you get awarded the top. If you don't manage to get that far, then every hold has a score attributed to it. The higher up you get, the higher the score. And there is a plus system as well, which we'll chat about more later, because I'm sure that will come into, yeah, into play. So Ilaria Scolaris from Italy is on the left, and Marcello Bombardi is back. It's nice to see him back on the big stage. It's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's had a few rough comps again as well, missing the semi-final round. But I think it's really just a testament to how high the level is and you know we say that every year um it gets kind of like cliche but this year in particular um you know especially last week in in the last comp in chamonix we saw some you know on paper some easy routes but when you actually got the opportunity to climb those routes it was really shocking how difficult they actually were considering how many tops they got um and you know the roots of that caliber would never have seen that many completions like five years ago when I first started it, it, it really is a we really have seen a big shift uh, in these last couple of years for sure yeah, and Marcello Bombardi I mean he's 28 and yet I think of him as such a legend of, of the competition scene this is like he's always been here and he has been there for quite a long time and it's good to see him back and then his teammate on the left Ilaria Scolaris is easily through the first part of her route as she eyes up that big overhang coming up above her Cello stepping up. 
being careful through this first part, I mean, every athlete's worst nightmare is to fall off down low. You want to you want to give this a decent go, don't you? Not make mistakes. Absolutely, and I think there's like a it's almost like a, a rule or a law of semi-finals. Like someone messes it up every single time. You know, somebody manages to blow the start, and the routes are often set in a way that is quite um, mentally challenging and quite risky at the beginning. And you know, in a sequence like we've seen before where the feet are quite large usually means the holds are quite bad. So it really prompts you to be really, really careful and really smart when you're climbing. Marcello Bombardi's got double heels in as he rests in the center of the wall. And he starts up towards where we think is the first real crux of the men's route in a couple of holds time. Ilaria reaches up into the 50 degree overhang and now she gets underway and you can see that's a better angle to show that overhang. Best way to spot it I find is to either to look at the drawers or to look at the climber's chalk bag um, and obviously the drawers are going to hang straight down so from that you can really see exactly how steep this wall is like it, it really means business this one. Yeah Marcello Bobardi's having to work here kicks the foot out right gets a bicycle in so that's the uh, the toe pressing behind the hold and then look at that right toe as he pushes all the pressure down into it to bump up to the pocket and again a bit of a, a different sequence through that yeah so i think that was more in line with what the root said as it had sort of told us to expect um it looked really really physical it looked really powerful like it's you know in terms of height he's halfway up the wall but in terms of like the amount of climbing he's actually had to do is quite substantial now, we are getting to a position where Campbell spotted a rest here, and he was pretty convinced there'd be a good rest. This is a good opportunity to see it. So, the hold she's holding on, the root setter said it's not as good as it looks. Yeah, I think, I think this hold is quite good. I think the next ones are quite poor. I think I saw a couple of opportunities potentially to rest here. Um, frankly, she's making it look quite cruisy. Uh, I, I, I think she's going to be able to definitely get some energy back. I thought maybe there was potential to like swing the feet out high up left um, or to take this next sequence and, and get a heel in like she's doing now and maybe you could score a rest there from the ground. It's hard to see exactly how uh, bad the holds are, but you know, she's making uh, nice work of this sequence so far. Definitely starting to fight, that's for sure. Yeah, she is. And the main difficulty of this women's route is to come on that head wall. Tiny holds are beckoning, but she's doing brilliantly. Coming up towards it. And it's, yeah, she got a big back on that rest, but I think the difficulty just ramps up so much. It's one of those rests where it's kind of almost irrelevant yeah. if you haven't got that standard. I, I think, and I think honestly, like, when you've already done 20, 25 moves of hard climbing, like, it's a, it's a semi-final, it's probably going to be, you know, at least a B plus. Um, for either gender at the sort of bottom end of what a semi-final might be. So there's only so much that you're going to be able to get back while you're still on the wall. Sometimes a, you know, full recovery, quote unquote, on a rest might get you another three or four moves, depending on, on what it looks like. Um, you know, the, the next boulder problem could be, you know, who, who even knows exactly how hard the individual moves can be necessarily. So, uh, yeah, rest is a very liberal term, I would say. <coughs> Yeah, it's not one of those sort of no hands rest, get everything back and then... Yeah, very rarely do we see anything like that at, at a World Cup level. Yeah. It really is about just pulling on, climbing as hard as you can for 30 moves maybe, especially in qualifications, and uh, and just climbing until you fall really. There's not too much uh, too much time to ponder on, on rests when you're on the wall. So Kathy Aikens now looks up at the route. So we know that there's a... A semi-rest for the women, at least. And then Martin Stranick is underway for the men in the Czech Republic. His teammate, Adam Andre, is not here this weekend, if you were looking forward to seeing him climb last last week's winner, I think, in uh, Chamonix. Oh, the circuit's moving so quick, I yeah, can't two, remember what week we're on. Two weeks ago, two weeks Chamonix, ago. We but it feels like it was not that long ago at all. It's yeah. been a very intense season. It really has so far, and we're getting towards the end of it now. Still loads of comps to go, though. Height of summer here in the Alps at the moment, and the heat has been scorching all day. It has gone away now, and the wall itself is in the shade as well. Yeah, the conditions are really, really nice at the moment, actually. I, when I first came to the wall, uh, the roots were in full sun. It was super hot, but then this cloud cover has come in. Um, hopefully, we stay dry for the rest of the night. I'm not really sure what the forecast looks like, but 
nice conditions for climbing at the moment, considering the heat that we've been seeing. Yeah, they'll certainly be enjoying this. So the athletes did qualify earlier on today. Then they had a re break and a rest. Yeah, Shaman, uh, sorry, Briançon is a, is a unique event in that sense that we do the qualifications on the same day as the semi-final. Um, so the athletes are likely very tired at the moment, given, given the heat that we were experiencing throughout the event. Um, and the fact that we've had to you know, do two separate warm-ups for two separate qualification routes is, is quite a lot to pack all into one day. Skin management as well, when it's this hot, is yeah. that a tricky thing too? It can be, I can be. I think the, there were sort of two warm-up walls that you could use. There was one uh, just behind this wall that we're looking at now, and then there's one in a building maybe a couple hundred metres away. Um, and the one just behind this wall has quite a lot more new holds, and the holds are a lot warmer being out about in the heat of the day. So it can definitely be something to think about. It's more of skin management. It's more of an issue in bouldering, I would say. It looked like we're seeing Keto start to fight on this route here. Yeah, she is. So she rocks out right, just fingertips underneath that underclick and then upgrades it to the better part of it. And Martin Stanek as well is where Marcello Bombardi fell. This sequence here, the first crux sequence for the men. Much, I mean, Martin Stanek is making this look very casual as we lose her on the left. But yeah, Martin is uh, in a very nasty position. It requires a lot of core to stand up that straight. It's almost horizontal with his body on the wall. It's difficult to tell from that angle, but he is. And he's trying to get something back for this next sequence of moves. So he gets a heel hook, comes out with the right into the pocket. Ah, and he was going for two yellow screw-ons on the edge of that volume in a pinch. Still a high point so far on that early on in the semi-final. Yeah, he, he made some, some sort of like smart little micro decisions. I think they something that's really important is making sure you're using all of your time on the wall and all of your energy on the wall really, really carefully. Um, like a big mistake I see comp climbers make with the ones that are a little bit less experienced is what I call like the two arm rest, where you just sort of hang on with both hands and just sort of sit there, not sure what to do. And, you know, obviously he was quite unsure of how to progress through the route next, um, but he, he decided to take a step back and use that time whilst he was figuring out the next sections to try and like get a little bit back, to keep calm, to chalk his hands, that sort of thing. So there's always like multiple things going on. And uh, I think he, he managed like a not ideal situation right there quite well, I thought. So Martin with that high point at the moment. We've got two more on stage. Taisai Homa on the right hand side and what a season Taisai Homa is having. Just unbelievable. And on the left, Sarah Choppa from Slovenia. She's in action there. Turns looks her B layer. Everything's ready to go and we get underway for the next set of athletes here. And there is Taisai Homa. I mean, Campbell, it, it, he's a very fun climber to watch climb because whenever he's trying, it looks like he's right on the edge at all times. There's no, like, composure, and yet he keeps pushing through that part. Yeah, absolutely. He's definitely one of those climbers. I find, like, I watch him and I'm like, am I not trying hard enough? Like, just the he's able to look like he's climbing at his limit for such a long time. And maybe he is. Maybe he is just able to climb at his limit for such a long time in a row, but it's, it's super impressive, and he makes really good decisions when he's tired and he always looks calm and collected and it's like uh it's quite um an admirable quality in a in a lead climber i think yeah the grit determination he has just to push through that pump is impressive came very close to beating adam Ondra in chamonix two weeks ago so tyson homer is one to watch for sure not the best of quality rounds for him fairly low down the order but tyson homer i think quite likes to not have that pressure he often comes out early on in a semi-final and does very well from it. And the, there's definitely a lot to be said for the switch in style between the qualifications and the semi-final routes. I, I do think that there's um, kind of a, there's a difference in the difficulty. The routes tend to meander a little more in the semi-finals than they're able to in the qualifications. So sometimes people are a lot more suited to the semi-final style than the qualifications or vice versa. And that's why sometimes you can see the, there's a little bit of a change. You know, in the end, climbing is climbing, and it's it's all about like who's the fittest and who's the smartest climber. But there's definitely a, like a little bit of a switch. Um, some people tend to perform a lot better on routes that are hard from the ground, and 
you know, straightforward like they might be in qualifications, whereas in semifinals you tend to maybe see some routes that are a little bit longer, they swing around a little bit more, there's a little bit more spectacle to them. Um, so it's, yeah. a, it's interesting that I wasn't aware of that difference in, in, the, in the routes. So maybe just suits Tyson Homer. Maybe he's just a semi-final specialist. <laughs> yeah, could could be sometimes. Yeah. So Sarah Choppa is continuing up. She's on this snake-like feature that comes up towards the head of the snake up high, and that's where the possible rest is. And Tyson Homer is trying to figure this sequence out now. This is where coming up. Oh, Sarah falls on the left. Tyson, not so much of a big crossover as uh, Martin Stranik did it. Different from him. And now this will be a high point for him. And there is confirmation on the right of your screen. 28 is his current score. Martin Stranik fell on 27 plus. Reaching underneath, and there is a possible rest, but he's a very tall man. He might find that quite awkward. This is definitely a sequence when I was looking at the route from the ground that I thought would be potentially quite tricky for taller climbers. You have to keep your feet in quite close to your body. It makes it really, really physical. Um, it depends on how good the undercling is, I guess. But honestly, he's still looking like he's really in control. He looks really fresh. Um, maybe he's having a, a bit of a better time of it than he did in the qualifications. Yeah, he's looking very good as he comes up to the blocked slot, which his right hand is in. And he's good at finding resting positions. We saw that in Chamonix when he unlocked a sequence that no one else really took advantage of in the way he did. Into the slopers, he's looking calm and collected, isn't he, at the moment? It's instances like this that give us a really sort of um, inaccurate idea of what the semi-final looks like. You know, we're so used to seeing the first climbers come out and, and uh, make it look really hard and potentially fall early, but, you know, he's a World Cup winner as of quite recently, so we might see a, you know, a high point that sticks around for a long time from Tyson. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I've, felt, I've fallen into that trap myself when he's been climbing. Innsbruck, for example, he came out, I think, second or first even, and mm. just did so well. Yeah, absolutely. And he's into the final sequence of moves here. Last section coming up as he pinches that black volume. You can see the thumb pressing into the edge of it. Snatches out with the right hand, and he's about three moves away here from potentially our first top for the men. Gets the feet over. Good work from Tysai Helmer. Oh, it looked like he was battling some fatigue there at yeah, the top. I think it was it was touch or go, touch and go whether or not he was going to finish that one. I think there was a moment where I thought it was going to happen, but we have um, that like long yellow hold. We had some blue ones of those in the qualification routes and. They, from the ground, they look like they should be quite good, like these flat little crimpy edges, but some of them are just terrible. So it's hard to know exactly which one it was. I, I would hazard a guess that it's one of the, the bad ones. So um, not surprised that he kind of just blew off. Yeah. Yeah, the women's route certainly was being tweaked quite near close to the beginning of this comp starting. A couple of holes removed and changed to make them harder for the women. And Tyson Homer is just trying to undo his knot down on the front. That's what the delay is, because that figure of eight knot, as you can see, the B layer gets involved. If you're pumped and your figure of eight knot locks up, it could be a nightmare to undo it. Oh, yeah, it? absolutely. There's, it's definitely a skill, uh, like a learned skill, I think, to be able to <laughs> pry a tight figure eight open. I use my teeth or ice axe, depending yeah, if something's around. True. Or like a carabiner, <laughs> yeah, like that whip works, a carabiner yeah. through. That was Tyson Homer's fault. Right, so he waves to the crowd, exits the stage down to the front, and the athletes are entering on the right of your screen. And there is our next athlete there, Momoko Abe, breathing, looking a little bit nervous before she walks onto stage. And now she sort of gets her game head on as she enters through that arch. And behind her is Toby Roberts. You saw him at the beginning of this broadcast. We did a little interview about him. This is his first World Cup. Although he's been very active on the youth scene and outdoors as well. And he, uh, he just came from a win at the European Cup um, just uh, last weekend, I think it was, um, where he kind of, I think he won every round, kind of dominated there. So I'm really, I'm for one, I'm really excited to see him compete in his first World Cup. The qualification round was reasonable. Um, and yeah, we'll see like if he'll carry pressure into his first semi-final or if the pressure's gone and he can just like climb freely. 
So Toby begins his first semi-final. Out into the pockets. You, he's one of those athletes you can see him learning. <laughs> you can see it coming into his head almost as he sucks up all the experiences. And it, it is a bit of a judge. Although he's, he's won comps, as you said, the European Cup, it, it's hard to come into this environment and perform because there's a lot more pressure, a lot, a lot more things going on. Yeah, and, and again, as we we're saying, the style of the roots, you know, at a World Cup, it, it really is just that next level and people perform differently at different difficulty of routes I guess so how you can I, I remember the first time I climbed on like sort of a World Cup level final world, world games for instance and it's like you just ha it's a completely different experience to be pulling that hard you know that close to the ground um, it, it, there really is a lot of learning that comes into just like pulling onto a super hard route you've never touched before and trying really hard and trying to climb it like you've done it a million times yeah, so will Toby be able to deal with that? Well, we'll see in a bit. Momoka Abe is looking good on the left. The women's route, not particularly difficult down low. The difficulty starts to ramp it up here in this next physical section. The women's route certainly is uh, its really eye-catching. There's lots of these big, powerful slopers, um, really involved physical climbing. It's quite cool to watch. We're saying there's like some potential rests, I think, if you're if you're clever, if you're fresh enough to catch them. Um, and then it just looks, frankly, really hard uh, as you start to pull into the head wall. Yeah, and the uh, top, oh, Toby Roberts, big cut loose move. That's one way of doing it. Then gets the heels up high. Another heel in, and he'll be able to clip and rest a little bit from this position. But that was a committing move from him, a lot of energy expended. Abe gets her feet back on, on the left as she enters the snake section of that women's route. So Toby has got that quick draw in front of his face. He's moving through it at the moment. He'll now clip with a heel on. Momoko is looking really, really nice. She's made some really uh, smart decisions, I think, through this deep section. Really good use of like heel hooks and toe hooks and that sort of thing. And she's got the jug now, so. She should, in theory, be able to get a little bit back here or at least sort of mentally regain her composure before this, like, hard section. A um, little bit of trouble with the clip there, though. Um, but given that she's on a nice hold, I think it shouldn't cause her too much trouble. Yeah, she's, she's moving quite quickly through the rest. Looks like she wants to get going. And she does. So she, oh, and then falls. Yeah, you were right. She started to look a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Started with that clip sequence. Kept her feet quite low in that section. Um, yeah, and I think it's... Oh, and we lose Toby as well. Yeah, Toby was coming in to the underclink. That's not a bad score from him. I'm not sure that will be enough for the finals, but I hate to say stuff like that because I'm usually wrong when I say something like that. But it's a fairly low fall for Toby, but good for his first World Cup. The man with the bright feature in front of him. So the athletes come out in reverse order from where they qualified. So the athletes who qualified in first position, they'll come out last. So that is Shan So and Jesse Gruper. So these few who are coming now, they're lower down the order. But as we said, it's difficult to, as Toby nearly takes a trip on those steps, it's very hard to call early on what might be happening because everyone's at such a good level at the moment, especially this year. I wonder if they know they can be filmed back there. I don't think they do, you know, because <laughs> they're waiting. I don't think, yeah, you don't think about it too much, frankly, especially when you're coming into the semi-finals. It's been such a big day already. You just really want to get out there and, and, and finish it off almost um, for the day. I think I'd milk it for the drama, put, put the dramatic faces uh, in yeah, there, yeah, you know, yeah. wave to mum. Pose for the photo. <laughs> I think one of the best, like, comp photos I have, actually, is me queuing up for my climb in semi-finals, just, like, beaming. I think someone had said something funny, but it just looks like I'm so excited to be there. <laughs> it's always, you know, it's always a good photo op. Absolutely. You've got, you got to know where these photographers are. <laughs> right. Jonas is, Jonas is on the way, on the right. Up he goes. And then on the left, we have... Giorgia Tessio from Italy.
vainqueur du classement général de la saison dernière en difficulté. Et le retour du patron, d'un des patrons de ce circuit un petit peu plus tard dans cette soirée. So about, it's athletes, about the same pace, Jonas on the right. Left hand in the pockets, comes up to the slopers, which are getting covered in chalk. Will be cleaned later on during the cleaning break after the first 13 climbers. Giorgia Tessio locks in that heel on the right, flicks it to a tote, and she'll move upwards. Yeah, it was a good shot that to show how overhanging this wall is and how complicated it is, is as well. Difficult one to read from the ground. The athletes had six minutes to observe it earlier on. And this now goes up. Makes that clip and he's about to enter the physical section of the men's route. Almost uh, identical pacing between these two. They clipped that draw at exactly the same time. It's like really funny to see them moving at the same pace. Is it hard to get, can you get sucked into that as a thing? If you're climbing next to a climber, obviously it's not a race, nothing to do with them. And yet, do you find yourself picking up their energy almost? No, I have absolutely no idea what's going on anywhere else in the world, except for where I'm like on the wall where I'm climbing. I think it's occasionally I hear someone cheering for me in the crowd maybe, but I definitely don't know what's happening uh, with the other climber on the wall, that's for sure. Like I said, there's just way too much going on in a world. Oh, no. Oh, early fall there from Georgia Tessio. Yeah, a little bad, uh, sort of poor decision making with her footwork there, I think. Well, we'll see a replay of that in a bit. But we'll stick Johannes now, Jonas now up into the pinches, bumping that hand. Right, so this is, we've seen a few different methods from this. Problem is, he's now going to work out how to bring the left in, does onto that slope, but then kicks out right. Big, powerful, accurate lock off coming up here. He manages to stick it. Yeah, that pocket, only three fingers for it. You have to, yeah, you have to be very accurate. Oh. He's losing his feet. You can was, see he's starting to kick on the wall yeah, a bit. Yeah, I was just about to say, I was impressed with how he'd managed to sort of reel that in. I thought he was coming off a little earlier than he did. And then I thought he was going to go a little bit further than he did. Yeah, just um, <clears throat> not enough pressure on that foot, really, as he swung it across. And that's what made it slip. And then he couldn't quite recover from that. Yeah, it's something I've discussed with a few co-commentators. Let's see, let's see Georgia Tessio here. So, oh, it's just a big swing that she couldn't pull back. So what would have caused, so feet coming out, is that just unlocking the feet sort of with too much <laughs> momentum I, and energy or? I'm not sure, I, I'm not quite sure if that was a decision or like just a slip. It, it kind of looked like she was planning on cutting her feet but hadn't quite like pulled her shoulders back and was like ready to take that sort of, you know, scorpion kick you usually see where people carry the force of the, of the whole swing through. Um, I think the, a smarter way potentially to climb that sequence is to, um, yeah, get those like toe hooks and heel hooks that we saw some of the other climbers making. Those crimps, I think, are, are quite small, so it would be hard to take the entire weight of your body plus the swing from the sheer angle of the wall all in one go. Yeah, it's, it's a hard move. We'll keep an eye on it when uh, Claudia Gisolfi climbs. She's next up. Jules Machelin from France on the right. Team France at the moment. What is going on with Team France? Yeah, and it's also, it looks like this is his first World Cup as well. He had uh, zero participation. So that would be no youth champs, no European champs. Um, he, this, this is like, he's fresh, fresh by the looks of things. <laughs> so he is underway on the right. Yeah, I say the French team because they've really come on this year. A lot of athletes. Yeah, they just have such a, a pool of talent to choose from. And I mean, even the, a lot of the athletes that didn't get selected for the French team are World Cup finalists, World Cup medalists. It's, uh, it's a really, really deep field, and it's such an intense game to qualify for the French team these days. Yeah, and it's almost like some, some of the other legends have sort of made way for the younger ones. You, know, you think Oriane Berton and... Uh, you know, uh, Medjie Schalk coming through and then some of the more established athletes like Julia Shanodi, you know, yeah, they're still absolutely. there competing, but there seems to be this new wave coming. Yeah, I think, I think, like I said, it's just, it's such an intense game. The French selection uh, is quite small margins this year as well. And so, you know, there are only so many spots and eventually they have to make a cut at some point. So we saw 
some uh, really, really strong French climbers missing out. And I think a lot of the French climbers who are climbing here and, and in Chamonix are looking for some good results in order to earn their ticket for the rest of the season as well. So it's a, it's a really uh, tight game for them. Yeah, it's pressurized. Those nationalities with a lot of depth to them. The, uh, you need to perform if you want to make the Olympics, if you want to make European champs. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's very intense at the moment. Well, Claudia Gasolfi slaps out left. Her brother will be climbing later on in the men's comp. Tell you what, that's a very quick climbing there from Jules. He's yeah, he's uh, rocketing through it as well. We see uh, Claudia has managed to keep her feet so far through this section and is looking looking really strong and really composed still. Jules looking great. This is where we lost Toby matching in. And there's a kind of a semi rest here if you can get to it, but it is awkward. You can see him shaking out. Cloudy Gasolf is one move away from her resting position. That's it. So she needs to swing the feet around and find a good place. And she does. Although looking a little uncomfortable with that left heel. Jules is just flying through this. A little bit of a knee scum there, trying to take some of the weight off of his hands, get a little back. Yeah, interesting rest. So he's got that right foot on the screw on, dropping the knee down, and then, yeah, full knee bar on the left briefly. Ooh. Just sort of managed to claw his way onto that volume a little bit. I think we're starting to see some fatigue here. If he can get through this sequence and get stood up, he might have another shake and a chance at the top, but it does look like he's struggling, and he does go. And Claudia Gasolfi as well, she just cut loose. Yeah, she's she's having some real trouble around this uh, this rest jug here. Well, quote unquote rest jug, you know, she's, uh, I think, it was, it's maybe easy to get lulled into a little bit of a false sense of security. You know, you've got such a good hold and you don't really want to let go of it unless you're absolutely sure that you can progress. And so you can spend a little bit too much time kind of faffing about, um, you know, trying to make the right decision rather than just making one. Yeah, and once she's made this decision, she's got to kind of commit to it with the heel up there. Because it was hard work getting into this. And now the problem is, is when you've got your heel up and you're trying to match your feet, You've got to create room yeah. to move your right hand up so you can make that move out to the and left. I think ideally she would want a heel hook and that little white snaky volume. There's a little red jib there that she could hook, but uh, I think she's kind of lost it now that she's moved on. Um, and I think she's trying to look for an alternative to... Oh, but I think she's found that heel again, and hopefully now she can use that to draw herself across. And hopefully she hasn't lost too much from that sequence just there, but definitely starting to see a fight for sure. Yeah, she didn't make the quickest work of that. And it does put pay to her. Yeah, I started saying earlier, because something I've discussed a lot throughout this season is that the mistakes compound themselves. So it's not necessarily about the mistake that is going to make you fall off, but in five moves time, that's when it kicks in. Absolutely. Like, yeah, if you use a little bit too much energy to get through a particular sequence at the beginning of the route, exactly, it compounds. It's all... It, that's one of the things I love about lead is that you make these decisions and sometimes they're the wrong ones and sometimes they spit you off, but other times they don't. And you have to be able to keep that composure and be really, really tactical about when you choose to use your energy and when you choose to uh, kind of go into fight mode and really start drilling for it, you know? There's a, there's a lot of uh, tactical and strategic um, prowess to, to being a top level lead climber as well. It's very different to the tactics that are required in, in like bouldering or speed, for instance. So when you're on the wall, in your own world, you can't hear anything else, are those the thoughts that's going through your heads? Are you talking to yourself or does it just come naturally? Um, I think it's, you want it to be able to come as naturally as possible. Um, there are so many things you have to focus on and so many decisions that have to be made all the time. You need as much of it to be instinct uh, instinctive and sort of habitual as possible so that you still like have that cognitive space to uh, to make the tougher decisions. Um, I think I'm sure some climbers talk to themselves and that sort of thing but I think for the most part you're just trying to maintain efficiency as much as possible the whole way through the route and um, you know not getting too caught up on a maybe a rest you thought you saw that once you get there it doesn't feel so good and just staying calm and making good decisions, really. Fascinating insights from Campbell Harrison here in the commentary box with me. And that is Yuval Shemela, 
another athlete back in a semi-final. And Hannah Moyle is on the left from Germany. She's been sick. I think it was COVID, actually. She did, yeah, she did get COVID. Um, so that uh, kept her out of the World Games, I think, which was a shame. Um, but she's back, and uh, hopefully she's feeling a lot better. At least she's feeling well enough to at least have made the semi-finals, so good for her. Yeah, she's very strong. Came Really came on in the last part of the Boulder season, where she got a silver medal. And from then, really, she's, she seems to have stepped her game up a bit here. So let's hope the sickness hasn't had too much of an effect. And Yuval Shemelo, well, a very, very popular man on the circuit. Am I right to say he won Ninja Warrior? He did. He won Ninja Warrior Israel. So he's uh, he's definitely like one of the most famous athletes in Israel. And I think to the point where it can be quite difficult for him to like walk into the gym and train because he's, he's so recognizable. Um, I think that can be maybe like a little bit of a, um, an obstacle for him sometimes in his climbing, but he looks in really good shape at this competition. Um, and so, yeah, I'm hoping for a really good performance from him. He has a fight like no one else. Through the qualifications, he's just screaming his whole way up the wall. Sometimes even when he's shaking out, he'll just scream like to prepare himself for the next move and it's it's not like um i don't know it's not like angry or violent or anything like that sometimes you can see people when they get really into it and they start screaming it's just like sheer determination you, he, he's one of those climbers you can see how bad he wants it and he never goes for a hold without trying to close his fingers on it it's it's um it's like really textbook uh in terms of like his yeah his like determination to succeed Okay, so keep an eye out on Yuval's fight on the right. He's nearing the first crux, and Hannah Moyle is looking pretty good here. She's got toes in. That position she's in looks to be a much better rest, especially when we saw Claudia Gasolfi kind of yeah. with the high, high heel. Yeah, I think, I think Claudia had something similar at one point. The problem is that, yeah, once you cut that toe out or take that heel out, they're really, really tricky positions to get back into. And so, you know, now... You've got to, once you decide to move, you have to know what you're going to do. Like you have to have taken that rest opportunity to plan and then go for it. So maybe Claudia went before she was ready, realized she needed more of a rest, and that's yeah. why she had to find I, the heel. I think maybe she wasn't fully decided on what she wanted to do or what she had decided she was going to do didn't feel like it was going to work. And there was like that aspect of confidence, perhaps. But Hannah's looking, yeah, she's looking in, uh, in cruise control still. She is, but now trying to work out the hand sequence you hear. Yuval Shemela started screaming. I'm sure you heard that on the right. Oh, nearly dropped that. That's such a weird finger position on that. I don't know what you call that. Wrapped around, but now he's in the pocket, bumps into it. And Hannah breathes deep as she reaches up through the last holds onto the head wall. Yuval Schemmler is nearing the height. Really fighting now, for sure. Gonna keep oh. tension. Ah, again, see, I was like, he's really going to keep tension through his feet, and then he lost him. But uh, Hannah's putting in a really good performance here. Awkward with that quick draw in the way. She'll now make the clip. At least he's in the right place. Oh, look at that left That's foot. That's super it's... impressive. So strong through her lower body as well. And then so readjusted the foot as well after. It's one thing to be able to put yourself into the position. It's another thing to be able to like rest and chill and feel comfortable enough to actually like get something back. So if Hannah can work this sequence out, the thing is she works this bit out and then she's into the real crux of this women's route. Yeah, it looks pretty intense from this section on. Lots yeah. of little crimps. Oh, it was going for such a long time. Got the right hand on the sloper, but it wasn't enough to keep her on the wall. Animal's done. Will that be enough? Keep updating the scores. Do download the RFC app, and we'll, of course, show you that leaderboard as it gets changed, as we go along. So Yuval Schemmler fell from the drop down into the undercling. Hannah on the head wall. Next up will be Molly Thompson-Smith and Dominic Schoffitz. But we stay with Hannah. You can see her hair blowing there. There's a lovely breeze that's come through the stadium. It's actually really good conditions for the athletes. It is. I almost, uh, I, I'm not sure I'm far off putting my jumper on, actually. It's, it's really starting to cool down here. I've noticed 
We have had uh, some super hot days here in Prionson, but really, really cold nights. It gets down to like 13 degrees or something, I think it was, which when you go from high 30s, it feels pretty intense. I see the sweat drying on your body. Oh <laughs> it's a horrible God, yeah. feeling. Well, there is Molly Thompson Smith and Dominic Scuffets as they come out. Molly looking very calm. She was walking around early, just in her own world. Yeah, she's. I think she's tired. It's been a really intense sort of start to the season, and um, she's been, you know, she's kind of always really on the cusp of finals, and it's hard to keep that up. But uh, fingers crossed for on this one. I'm a bit of a shameless uh, Molly Thompson Smith fan, so. I just have to declare that now. That's fine. You're allowed to be as biased as you want <laughs> in this commentary box. It's absolutely fine. I will stay neutral-ish. So, <laughs> Dominic Scuffitz looks up at the route, rereading it for him, and Molly's underway on the left. And Dominic is another one of these athletes who's he's come close to finals. He's had really good qualifying runs, comes into semi-finals. It hasn't quite gelled for him yet. Yeah, he's been a little inconsistent this season. Um, yeah, who knows? I mean, he's he's got his gym now that he's a part of running, and so there's so many other priorities that come into his climbing. And um, yeah, like we've said, it's a it's a changing game, absolutely, and the style changes, the the trends in route setting change, and you know, you, you really have to be on it all the time. So, yeah. but he's definitely a climber. I think has he always has the potential to be really really successful. Yeah, he does. He always just seems almost there. If just something clicks for him, you know, we'll see the Domin that we saw win the overall lead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's somebody who can do it. Well, Molly reaches up on the left. She enters the physical section. She'll enjoy this little sequence of moves, I think. Yeah, I think this is a route that could potentially suit her as long as she makes good decisions. She quite like quite likes that, you know, powerful style of climbing. I think she'll feel really confident in the you know, those sort of bits where the feet aren't so nice, but you have to climb really, like, campusy and strong. And you can see the body tension she's got going on. There on the left, nearly misses that drop. Now locks in the toe. Crosses through onto the snake. Big, powerful cut there. That'll definitely... That's definitely one of those uh, compounding decisions we were talking about before. In the moment, maybe it doesn't feel that fatiguing, but it really does add up as you sort of approach the higher sections of the route. Yeah, she'll be looking forward to this rest as she gets her feet stretched out to the right. A Tufa style sequence of moves there. And then Domin is eyeing up the crux, or the low crux for the men. Now Molly will get this opportunity to rest. Gets the clip in nice and quick, nice and easy. But uh, she's um, straight into it again, so not stopping just yet. Yeah, she, she's one of those, like, endurance probably isn't her best feature, so I know she feels like she needs to climb quickly. Isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, she goes. It looked like she was all good there. So Molly, fairly low fall for her. We'll keep an eye on that score, but I don't know yeah. if that's going to be enough. I think there's, this, I think that bit looks. We were talking about before the route. It looks like there's going to be a rest, but I don't think there is. And so maybe she thought she'd be able to get a little more back. It kind of looked like she, she hit that last flake and just froze for a second. I think maybe she expected a little bit more than she got. Yeah, she had wanted the feet on that resting jug that she was holding on to. Well, Domin makes the move to the pocket. Good. And now it's this next sequence that's got a lot of people. So you come into this volume, that's all fine. Cross through to the pocket, but it's a drop down to the underclings is very difficult. And he's trying to get a heel toe underneath. Which works. Yeah, so it wasn't holding so him, just enough to sort of keep him into the wall. Yeah, he's making this uh, undercling look really, really comfortable. Seems to fit that space quite nicely. So Domin breathing deeply as the wind whips around us. Crosses into the pocket and things just get more intense. If he can push through that head wall, he will get an opportunity to shake out again. But then no pausing from now on. Big slap out to the right. Although having said that, we saw a uh, some cheeky knee bar beater in here earlier. 
Domin just goes and falls on the sloper. So that moves him up into third position. But we have a lot of athletes to come. We're getting closer to our cleaning break. Four athletes to go before the root setters will be on the wall, making sure everything is ready for the next set of athletes. Jilu Lu is out next for China. Let's watch Molly. That was the wild slap out to the left, feet in the air. And then this is where, yeah, I mean, she yeah. dropped the move going into the resting. Yeah, the, the toe hook, I think, was maybe not... I think a heel might have been more effective. She would have been able to like get a lot more power out of a heel in that section. Um, you're not really in that hold until you get your feet up, and so I think you've got to have a lot of tension going into it. And yeah, it just wasn't quite there, unfortunately. So Jilu Lo from China comes out. She's still 16 and has <laughs> been very impressive, especially during the boulder. And then on the right is Yoshiki Ogata, the overall winner for 2022's Boulder season. So she looks up at the wall. The reason the medals aren't there is because uh, it's for lead, not Boulder. Yeah, and there are only, only five participations total, which all from this season. Um, since uh, I think her first World Cup was Brixen. And then since then, I guess she's done everything. So very yeah. intense uh, introduction to World Cup climbing. It really is. Her coaches told me they didn't know how good she'd be because they hadn't put her against anyone. So although they knew she was good within their national element against other climbers, they just didn't know. Yeah, well, I guess um, a lot of climbers in a lot of countries, especially from countries like China, where there have been quite strict COVID restrictions, they haven't even been able to, been able to attend like uh, World Youth Championships or anything of the sort or Asian Championships. So um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of climbers coming in blind and I think that also goes we were talking before about certain athletes performing uh, or not quite performing to the same standard that they were however many years ago but I guess so much has happened in that time it's it's easy to forget that we just lost an entire year or two years worth of competition climbing in a sense and this is really the things aren't back to normal but this is kind of the year where we're starting to see the same levels of the field and the same number of nations participating again and it's a it's a whole different scene to what it was last year or you know especially the year before yeah everyone has very strong fingers due to fingerboarding during <laughs> yes. lockdown <laughs> that was a, a serious consideration root setters had to think about because they knew
Apologies about that slight technical issue. Uh, everything went black for us and shut off, but we are back now. And uh, Yoshiku got it, got high, didn't top out. And yeah, second, second place, I think, behind Taise. Yeah, so good performance from him. Right. As I said, sorry if you uh, lost us. We are back now. Hopefully, we'll stay with you. And uh, Hamish MacArthur is on the right-hand side, and Luka Rakovitz is on the left. Hamish, GB climber number two in this semi-final. So both athletes walk towards the wall, get underway. Luka again hasn't kind of she hasn't quite got her season off yet. You sort of feel like she's waiting for that that big breakthrough moment. Yeah, yeah, she hasn't been quite so dominant as she has in other years. Um, it could be a multitude of reasons for that, I guess. Sometimes it's just that World Cup climbing is really hard and it's really hard to be consistent. Um, but yeah, hopefully she can uh, have another good one and I'm sure as the season goes by, she'll be able to like gain a little bit more fitness, especially we've had, you know, two weeks break since Chamonix, so that's a little bit of time to get some training in and then now we've got a, you know, a long break before the next World Cup, so could be a whole new game for the next ones as well. Yeah, exactly. A bit of time. I know everyone was feeling quite fatigued as we mentioned it. Yeah, we were actually, um, a, me and a bunch of friends, between our first and second routes, we're all just kind of whinging, really, <laughs> about how tired we are and how ready we are to, you know, go home and see our families and friends and that sort of thing. As much as it's like very glamorous and exciting life, it, uh, it definitely wears on you um, and there comes a point where you're like, okay, I need a break now and I've got, you know, one, two, three, four more routes, however many, I've just got to pump them out <laughs> and stay focused while I can and then I get the opportunity to just take a breath. Yeah, and that's coming up for, for you certainly next month. European champs are next month though, so a lot of these athletes will be competing in that. Hamish MacArthur cuts loose and swings. Hello to everyone watching at home. We are in Briançon for the IFSE Lead World Cup. My name is Matt Groom, and I'm here with Campbell Harrison in the commentary box. And we're getting up to towards halfway through this semi-final now, towards the cleaning break. Hamish making big moves, gets the left locked in. And Luchka as well, she's known for her incredible flexibility, her ability to find rests as well. Oh, a little bit of a, a foot slip there as she was going for that move, but she managed to kind of reel it back in again. Again, another sort of compounding factor as the route goes by as to how much energy she'll have, you know, if she starts to reach the head wall. Yeah, she will get this opportunity to rest. You see that big move she made with the toe locked in. And Hamish now, he starts the first crux sequence, gets the match on the sloper. Easily into that pocket. Lutka with the high right heel, almost wrapping her own hand there in the process. And this is the kind of flexibility I was talking about. Look how comfortable she looks in those positions. If we think of Claudia Gasolfi, just didn't look quite as solid as she did. No, Lutka definitely is one of those athletes who has a lot of mobility um, and, and is really able to use it to its fullest while she's on the wall. See, she's found that rest that I was uh, expecting, that the root set has told me was no good. <laughs> she's cruising. I feel very validated right now. You should be. She's, she's milking it for all it's worth, for sure. And Hamish will bump up 
into that blocked hold. Alicia is still there. It's so interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the root set has denied that existed, but there it is. Yeah. But I mean, you, it's so difficult to try to come up with it's, every eventuality. It's so different for every climber as well. You know, like it absolutely makes sense that, you know, for everyone who had climbed the route so far, that that route was not, that rest was not possible. Same with most of the climbers we've seen get to that section so far. They weren't able to rest there, but it just, it just suits Luchka, her, her mobility, her strengths, whatever it might be. And now she's starting to put in another fight, uh, coming into the head wall. Yeah, she would love to make finals here. Hasn't for a while. Now Hamish is having to battle as well. He's on the two slopers, comes into the crimp with the left hand. Ooh, big, big foot slip there from Luchka. I was really surprised that she managed to hold on to that one. The second one for her. Well, she gets high and then was almost mantling this section, palm down. And Hamish is still on. Big scream up there on the wall. Look at that shoulder position from Hamish. This is great from him, but now he's stuck. Yeah, that was the last move. That was all of his juice was gone, I think. That was it. Yeah, that man is done. Well, we stick with Luchka. Is she again that rest with the right heel? That was a great fight, honestly, from her, considering, you know, a couple of, of mishaps through the steep section. It was really impressive that she managed to, to keep going that far. I thought that was a really good, uh, really good burn. You could see her almost, like, calm herself down. Yeah. And just let it go and then move on. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you really do. You have to just, like, recenter, refocus and, and, and keep going. It's not quite like in bouldering. You know, in bouldering you can make a mistake and then you have to refocus and, and, and have a whole new go. But with lead, it's a little bit different in that you, you're still on the wall and you don't have that time to reset. You've just got to, it's got to be instantaneous and you've got to go for it. Yeah, there's no brushing break to get your thoughts collected or, you know, it's, it's pretty relentless. And that was her fault. So good from her. Next two up, Sebastian Halenke. There he is on the right with that very distinctive hairstyle that he's had for a while now. Yeah, I remember, I think the first time I saw him, he was like a youth A, so like 16 or 17 in Singapore. And he had a gecko, actually, a mohawk, like in the shape of a gecko shaved into his head. <laughs> <coughs> it's always been red. It's always been there. It's his, his, his calling card. <laughs> trademark. Yeah. Well, Ryu Nakagawa is on the left. She's having another brilliant season. So one who could potentially make finals. And Sebastian Haleke, he can do something every now and again, like surprises you. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he just like does everything perfectly and it all comes together and he has a really stellar performance. And he loves being on the scene. I chatted to him last year and he was telling me how he sort of almost walked away from it and then made this decision and yeah yeah we, we didn't see him for about a year or so and he came back and I think it took him a little bit of time to find his shape and find his groove again and then you know he's just a, a another staple on the scene really of performing well in semi-finals yeah, I think when he's having a good time that's when he performs uh, yeah for sure for sure so Ray took a while to get off the ground she's underway now Careful through this section, you can see shining in the lights there, the no-tex section of the dual-tex holds. Sebastian Helenke with that bicep -y move on the left. Feels good, that kind of a move. When you, when you pull up on the bicep like that and you're in position, it's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're in a World like Cup semi-final. That's like big muscles all just putting like a lot of force through the hold. Yeah. It's like a confidence move. Like, feels yes, nice, feels yeah. nice. Ryu is going up easy through this first bit. It's not too difficult. You just need to make sure you don't get overly pumped. Don't overgrip. Don't start to get nervous. Sebastian Helenke jumps out towards the right. It's like almost a dino there, but not quite through that section. So he rests with the, height, with the right heel in. Ryu taking her time as well. They're going to get a bit more physical for both of them in the next couple of sequences. Yeah. 
So Sebastian gets that clip in. Remember, you have to clip all the draws on the way through the route. In fact, we saw an incident in the qualies where someone missed a hole down low, uh, draw down low. It's easy to do, especially with those first few. Yeah, it can definitely happen. It's, yeah, at the beginning, the draws tend to be quite close together. Sometimes you just miss it. And uh, yeah, it can happen sometimes. So Sebastian fiddling with the clip, gets it in. And a big puff out with his cheeks there. Drops back down to the pocket. Got a lot of experience and know this is a tricky sequence to get right. So into the pinch, kicks the feet out, gets that heel toe underneath just enough to help the move. Drops in, and that was good work from Sebastian. Straight through, no resting for him. Yeah, you're right. I think it's. I think it lulls you into that rest a little bit. It's um. It's such a big hold, but it's such a strenuous position, and so you know maybe it feels like nice for the forearms, but the rest of the body's working really hard to stay there. And you know it's an, another one of those aspects of the sport where you you have to be confident in making the decision. Am, am I going to try and get something out of this, or do I just keep moving? And for him, it looked like it was a really good call to just keep going because. He's uh, he's looking pretty good still. I think it's there's some fatigue coming in, but yeah, he, he's got he's got more to go. He does, doesn't he? Look, so he's rocking up now, pushing with the right palm. Ryu nears the end of the overhang into the headwalk. I should say Ryu. Sorry, apologies about saying Ryu. So Ryu Nakagawa. Fighting really hard to uh, to that really shouldery sequence there, Sebastian. Yeah, he has wings coming back. <laughs> Hamish did a similar move. And he's gone. That was a good score, though. So he's up there in the top eight at the moment. 32 her score at the moment, 35 plus Hannah Moore and Lutka. Ryu, by uh, contrast, is looking very chill right now. She is, gets that left knee drop down. That's not the sun on the screen, by the way. That's a light at the top of the wall. They are rhythmically pulsing to the music currently. Oh, had a moment there. She brought the left in. Up with the right. And she's down. Right, we're one athlete away from our cleaning break. 12 gone already. 26 usually in a semi-final, unless strange things happen due to count back like we saw in Innsbruck and we have more athletes coming through. How have you found that as an athlete? Because we've seen a lot of instances where we've seen a lot of tops and we've discussed that, but when it comes down to time in a finals, that's not the ideal situation for an athlete, is it? No, obviously not. It's a, you know, it's a, a last resort, really, to make sure that there's a separation on the podium, essentially. Um, but in the same vein, you know, as a competitor, if you want to win, it's, it's something that you have to consider. You know, it might happen and you have to be able to handle the pressure. Like, I, I know for one, I'm, I'm a climber who really struggles to handle the pressure knowing that another climber has topped. Um, especially if I know it's going to have to come to time. So, um, but you know, it's, it's part of the game to keep cool and calm under pressure. Um, ideally, you know, there are three routes before the final. You know, ideally you have a split. Um, it, it becomes kind of interesting, like we saw in Innsbruck where there were two qualification groups. So you have half the climbers um, climbing on different different selections of routes. So you, um, yeah, you can't take count back to the qualifications. and. That, you know, increases the likelihood that potentially things are going to go to time. And, you know, it doesn't always go to time purely because multiple athletes top the route. Sometimes they just fall at the same spot. So, you know, I think the route setters have a, a tough but very important job of setting routes that are going to be able to provide even the slightest split to, you know, ideally ensure that that doesn't happen. But if it does, you know, you as an athlete, you have to be ready for it. Yeah, you have to roll with that. So Camila Pugier is on the left and on the right. Mashihiro Higuchi from Japan. 
Camille is looking in, I trained with her for a while in Innsbruck and she's looking in really, really good form. Um, she's a climber who's been like really close to making finals before quite a lot of times. Um, so yeah, I'm I, another climber I would like to see have a good performance, I think. When someone is that close to making it to that next step, what does it need to get you there? Is it a training change or is it just time? If I knew, Matt, I would probably <laughs> have been in more semis and finals this year, but... Um, when I find I, out, I'll let you know. Right? Yeah, 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 please do, please do. Um, uh, I don't know if there's like a necessarily one great big secret, because like we said, you know, the roots change every comp. Um, so every comp, something different is being demanded of you. Um, sometimes it's a little bit of luck, you know, sometimes you just need to be stronger. There's so many different factors and I wouldn't profess to know what Kemi needs to do exactly, but um, I, I think, you know, she's definitely one of those climbers who, who really has it in her. She's like consistently really close. So will this be her night here this evening in Briançon? She reached up and just readjusted that quick draw that got a little bit twisted. Masahiro Huguchi cuts loose. As he reaches up towards that tick marked jib. We'll screw on on the black volume. Camille climbing very quickly through that sequence. She's coming towards the rest now. Readjusting all the holds, making sure of it. And now one big move away before the rest gets the toe in and actually decides to rest down low. I think she she eyed up that move and realized she was actually in quite a good position. Yeah, I think when you've got crimps like that on a volume, you know, if you are able to take them from the right angle, they can become quite juggy, honestly. You know, it's that's what's kind of interesting about them. It's really specific to the body position that you've got. So how will she rest? I'm fascinated in this. Now someone's unlocked the Campbell rest. I want to see where <laughs> the rest of them can do it. Mashihiro is trying to get this sequence figured out. Chalks up. Yeah, she's looking a little lost and a little trying to figure out exactly what it is that she wants to do to progress. She's got her feet up quite high and now she's maybe a little stuck like we saw with Claudia. Yeah, you can sometimes get trapped into just kind of going more and more with the feet once you've yeah, committed yeah, to it. Yeah, for sure. And here she is, you know, wrestling and really just like using a lot of energy, despite being on quite a nice hold. So a bit awkward from her. Has she got something in the tank? She slaps out left. You see the hole flexing. Oh wow, the that wall was there. quite a lot of movement from yeah. that hold, actually. Ah, uh, this is an interesting. I don't think that this is going to work out. Ooh, a drop knee keeps her in. Fighting through this, but this is a long way from the next sequence. Yeah, and as soon as she came off, hand went straight to the forehead, like she knew that she'd made a mistake, I think, which is a shame. She'd climbed so well up until that point. But like we said, you get on a nice hold and it lulls you into this like false sense of security. And um, it's really easy to get sucked into wrestling with the jug, trying to make it into this rest that it just might not be. Jug wrestling, it's a new sport. So Bashihiro swings out with the feet. Those slopers are nowhere near as good as they look, even though a hold is big like that. And then that left hand, we've seen the amount of effort the athlete's having to do. We briefly saw why there. It's not a great hold, that. Palming with the right flexibility to bring that left leg, right leg up. Yeah, super important to be like strong through the hips. And then again, as we're saying, like the the strength to bring his foot up, he, it just wasn't quite high enough. So that when he started to stand up into that hold, his like body weight was a little bit too far to the left, which pushed his hips out of the wall, and then he wasn't able to hold the hold anymore. Whereas if he'd kind of been able to get his right foot a little bit further over, he could have sunk more of his weight onto the hold and like dragged his body and dragged his center of mass over the top of that big sloper. Um, so like it just shows how important it is to have that flexibility and have that mobility and be able to like really put your feet anywhere that they need to be. Right, we are halfway through our semi-final and now it's time for the cleaning break. Mashihiro Higuchi is still on, we'll see his moment. Camille, this is where it came undone for her. Had 
to work a little bit too hard through the resting jug. And Mashihiro, this big cut loose swing. Eyes locked in on the next foothold. And did well. So, interesting route. No tops so far, but some big names to come in the last six, especially. The, uh, the last five for the women is beginning to look all too familiar at the yeah, top. Yeah, it, it almost becomes a different route when those last few women come out. It's such a stark contrast between the like the upper echelon of the field, and I, and I think also comparative to the men, where you know there are still those surprises. Um, but in the women, if, if something changes in the top five, six, it's, it's not just a surprise, it's an upset. Like, yeah. no one was expecting it, no one saw it coming. Um, and, you know, a route can look so difficult for so many amazing climbers, and then these top six women just come out and walk it. It's, it's absurd. Yeah, a different, different sport is the right way of saying that, for sure. Well, we've just seen the men's leaderboard. The women's, Luchka Rakovic is leading the way, 35 plus. Just behind her is Hannah Moyle, 35 plus as well. That'll be decided on count back. Georgia Tessio fell fairly low. She's in last position of the athletes who have gone so far in 13th. And Risa, she'll be on after the cleaning break. Shen So qualified in first position with a top. And Yanya Garnbrett also got a top, came okay, very close to her score, but is in second position. And Laura after that. So that is the view from behind the climbing wall in Briançon, this town that winds its way up a hill. The athletes and public have been coming into this giant field that we're all in for a couple of hours before the semi finals. And something we've seen all year, actually, is the amount of spectators who are in for the semi finals. It's nice to see it packed like that. Yeah, I, in Chamonix, actually, for qualifications, toward the end of qualifications, we had like this massive crowd. And um, I you know, was with some family that were watching too. And they're like, oh, there's so many people here. And I'm like, just you wait and see. <laughs> it, uh, it really packs out that venue and all the venues, honestly. Have you seen, since the Olympics took place, have you seen sort of more people being interested in the sport? I mean, when you're in the gym or you're walking around your, your hometown, do you ever get recognized and spotted? Uh, I definitely, I get recognized in gyms. I don't think I've ever been recognized outside of a gym. That would be a, a unique experience. I think it's still very specific to the uh, climbing environment. Um, but there's, you know, without a doubt, a lot more interest in climbing, a lot more people getting involved. Um, I work at a climbing gym back home and, you know, we'll sometimes have 400 people coming through the door a day and, you know, maybe 200 of them have, have never climbed before. So it's um, it's definitely, we've definitely seen a huge growth in the sport since, since it made its first sort of Olympic inclusion, definitely. Well, it's good to see it getting more popular. Well, Jesse Gruper is an athlete who's been coming through for a while now, and we had an interview with him earlier on today. So I think we're going to go to Jesse Gruper. With USA's Jesse Gruper. And Jesse, look, I'll be honest, at the beginning of the season, when you burst back into the scene, I did not know who you are. I had to, like, look at your details, talk to people. What an incredible season you're having so far, man. Thank you, yeah, honestly, it was kind of a surprise. Uh, obviously, I love climbing, love training, uh, but it's so nice to be back out here uh, fighting hard and able to show myself on the circuit. Well, look, you're making podiums, you're getting medals. Why weren't you around for a while? What happened in those couple of years where we didn't see you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I was still climbing. Um, I think COVID, I wanted to take a step back. After competing in 2019, I kind of wanted to see uh, sort of if there was a way for me to feel more fulfilled in life by not just focusing on myself, but also like kind of working with others as well. Um, so I kind of worked for a little bit. Um, and uh, I think I always just had that spark inside of me that said, well, I could always do like a little bit better on the circuit. Wouldn't it be nice to go back out there? Um, so I'm here now. So it's Innsbruck, you've come back and you end up getting a medal. I mean, it's outrageous. <laughs> Talk to me a bit about Innsbruck. How was that comp? It was incredible. Um, I trained in Innsbruck in 2019, and that was the first time that I got, kind of got situated um, to the stadium and the indoor wall as well. Um, and we had been training there for about two weeks before the comp. Uh, and yeah, I guess competing just felt incredible. The atmosphere was so cool. I love that wall. I love how tall it is, uh, how like flowy the moves are. Uh, and it was great to just like be able to feel like myself on the wall and uh, kind of push myself. Well, look, I love watching you climb because it's always a drama when you're out there on the wall. You're fighting through every sequence. For the rest of the year, we're going to see you at every event and into 2023 as well. 
that's my plan right now. Hopefully I don't get injured and I can uh, stay healthy and fit and uh, show myself on these walls. Awesome. Well, Jesse, best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. So great to hear from Jesse Gruper. And it was, uh, it was interesting for me when he came on in Innsbruck, I genuinely didn't really know who he was. And I had to sort of check and look. And then I learned more about him, chat to the American team. And I know he's been there, but he had this break away from comp climbing. And he's come back with a whole different fire in him. Yeah, I guess because I guess he was, um, he's, he had a few comps where he really performed before you were commentating, I think, um, made a couple of finals in China and in Japan and, you know, was pretty up there. Um, and then, yeah, I, right before this season started, he was another one that I was training with in Innsbruck a little bit. And I was like, this guy is in really good shape. I was like, he, oh, he's going to be in some finals for sure. And then, like, pff, just totally exceeded that expectation. You know, it's uh, some kind of crazy freak of nature how he hasn't won a World Cup already. Um, I think he got he got pretty unlucky in Chamonix. He he uh, accidentally toe hooked the edge of the wall in one of his qualification routes, so um, that knocked him out of the semi final, which was a real shame. Um, but you know he's had we've talked about the season being packed. He's had an absolutely packed uh, season. You know he he competed in Chamonix and then he flew to Alabama, competed at the World Games in Alabama, and then came back. And now he's here for, for this competition. So he's really had a lot going over the last a few weeks. Yeah, the jet lag <laughs> man must be experiencing is intense. So Jesse Gruper will be out last for the men here this evening. And certainly one we'd almost expect to make finals in 2022. So the women's route is being cleaned. The men's is just being finished off, as we can see. And the reason that they clean it is because chalk can create less friction on the holds, which is a strange thing to get your hair around, but can kind of fill up the textured surface of them. So they need to be cleaned to give everyone a similar difficulty of route. Don't do it in the finals, because there aren't as many athletes. Yeah, with just eight climbers, you don't really need to so much. Like, um, you know, most climbers only grab each, each hold one or two times for the most part. And yeah, like you said, it starts to layer up and cake up and can kind of mix in with the sweat and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, and the rubber, the shoe rubber as well is definitely something that needs to be cleaned off the holds. So um, yeah, the cleaning is a super important part of the, of the competition process for sure to make sure that it's, uh, it's fair for everybody. So we are close to it being done though. A root setter there hauling his way through the route. He hasn't climbed it. I was, one day I want to see a root setter just sort of send it at the same time. <laughs> well, I guess we do We do see the route setters climbing our uh, qualification routes because we True. get to see four running videos, but they're usually all cut together. And, you know, the route setters, have, they set the qualifications last because, you know, the first thing that has to be on the wall. So uh, I can only imagine how much climbing and testing that they've already done leading up to that point. Um, I feel like if I was in their position, um, route setting for a competition, the last thing that I would want to be doing is trying to climb the... 8C, 8C plus, you know, World Cup semi-final route um, in front of a crowd of thousands after, you know, oh, someone like Taisei Homa has, has... Absolutely, it's a ridiculous thought. And yeah, I sort of want to see it happen. Yeah. yeah. Like brush in mouth, <laughs> locking off between sequences. Well, the route has been clean now and we are waiting our next few athletes. Philip Schick from Italy and Risa Otta from Japan will be the next two out. That is our crowd there to the left of the wall. So kind of where you guys are watching this from. That's where they are. And they're stretching way back across the field. <laughs> Mom on one TV. Yeah, it takes place over like a big, big oval, like grass oval thing. And it's there's just so much space. And it uh, it's like a great big festival almost. There are like little food trucks and... Um, like beer and wine and that sort of thing. And it's 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 quite a fun um, event. And a kind of unsuspecting venue. You get here and you're like, uh, oh, you know, it's not like a, it's not Chamonix or it's not a stadium or anything. But then like once the people start to pack in, it has a really nice vibe. And the wall is very immense over the field and the lighting is really incredible. Um, yeah, and it's, it's it ends up being a very special competition when you maybe don't necessarily expect it to be when you first get here. It's not as, you know, postcard as some of the other comps but it's really special yeah i think you're very right with that 
with that analysis. So Philip Schenk, he's 22. He will get going. Cleans his feet off, makes sure everything's all good. And then Reese Otter on the left. Another climber who's been on the circuit for a really, really, really long time, Risa Ota. I remember her being like one of the first climbers I would watch in the World Cups, like before I'd even competed at a youth championship or anything. So when I was yeah, like 14 or something like that, so 11 years ago now. Have you ever told her that? I've never spoken to her in my life. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if she speaks English. Um, but yeah, no, she just, I just remember like she was in finals, you know, years and years ago and she's just been on the scene for like such a long time. Yeah, she's got that experience. I think at the moment we've got this difference between sort of experience and youth coming through and, and they're complementing each other sometimes. But yeah, yeah, climbing's really interesting in that no one really can pinpoint exactly what the like peak performance age is um, because there are just so many outliers. You know, you get the, the young guns coming through and having their you know, kill a first season, but then they have like a bad season maybe, and you have someone who's 30 years old, who's, you know, consistently winning or winning for the first time. It, it hasn't quite got that, um, you know, that equation as to, you know, what a climber needs to be or look like in order to be successful and perform. Oh, Reese nearly fell there. Yeah, no, you're right. You know, with football and other sports, we, we you know, you have that age where someone is almost like past it when they get to that point and it doesn't really work like that in climbing yet. Yeah, I think there's just too many factors and like we said a few times now, every time you step up to the plate in climbing, you are expected to do something different and uh, some of it suits you and some of it doesn't. So that is our top 13 at the moment. Taisa Homer leading the way, 44. Yoshiko Ogata, 41 plus. And then Hamish MacArthur joining Sebastian Halenke on that 41 plus score. That's for the men. And for the women, Luka Rakovic, 35 plus. She draws with Hannah Moyle, but count back means Hannah gets bumped down to second. And we're looking for the top eight. So Gilulu is in the danger zone at the moment, but some big names to come. So don't expect things to stay like that. So Philip resting with the high left toe, right foot driven down onto that crimp. And he picks his moment and continues upwards. Risa looking super chill, just chalking up, shaking out. She's again, like I said, she's been around for quite a while, so she's definitely got that like old school lead style of very slow and like shaking and resting and everything as she goes up the wall. Which can really contrast to some of, again, some of the younger climbers who can sometimes be a little bit more just go, go, go. Yeah, I remember when Anak Verhoeven kind of retired from comp climbing. She had that old school style, the shaking out, the resting. And yeah, we see, oh, but Risa falls on the left. And we carry on with Philip. Yeah, the, the, the speed thing, the faster style of climbing definitely suits some athletes. Yeah, for sure. And I think with the, you know, the, it's been quite a while now since this change came in, but we used to have eight minutes in semis and finals as opposed to the six minute time limit that we have now. Um, and I think some of the older climbers, you know, it, it was, people were still timing out when we had eight minute routes and the routes were the same length. So, you know, it was a big adjustment for a lot of climbers who really chose to use that time and that time limit really played to their, to their strengths. Philip, you could hear him there breathing heavily as he dropped down into the underclink. Such an awkward position to be in. It looked quite relaxed there, but it's not. I think it's this pocket that the uh, route set has changed. By the way. I, think it was it. The, I think it was the one before. It was the one before, okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a hold and it's, it's in this little scoop of a volume. You can just see it on the right-hand side of the screen now. Um, and the root setters, uh, they wanted it to fit in this little scoop, so they left it out in the sun. So it got a bit soft and then like flexed it into shape. And it's really just a testament, I think, to the resources that, yeah. that, that they have available to them. Like imagine setting at your local gym and being like, I'm just going to melt this hold. Oh, a little bit of a slip there with the clip. Yeah, dropped it immediately. He's going to try to clip it from a different position, perhaps, but he hasn't got it in yet. You can climb past the draw, but there is a point where you're not allowed to go any further. 
this and time gets it. And if you go past the point at which you're, it's perceived to be impossible to clip, uh, you like you will no longer receive any points. So sometimes see people climbing past the clip and then getting a lower score. Seeing some fighting coming in, he's getting a little bit less precise with all of his movements, just trying to get that next point, the next little bit of score that might be the difference between finals or not, essentially. Yeah, we know what's coming next. This is a hard move. So he wants to press on the right hand as much as possible, which he does. Now he's got to bring the right foot through. Can he get stood up and underneath? You have to be accurate the first time you get that foot there. It's hard to readjust it. Yeah, you've got to be able to get your weight over. If the foot's too far to the left, then um, you won't be able to get your center of gravity over the top of the hold and you'll, yeah, it's over. But he managed to get through that quite comfortably, actually. We saw a lot of people fighting really hard with the elbows really high. Oh, fifth position for him, unless he gets that plus awarded. We'll wait and see. There's that 41 is really the high point crux. And again, Taisei Homer coming in early <laughs> and uh, making it look easy. He was a third athlete, sorry, fourth athlete out. And he's still got the high point. So Philip undoes his knot. That was a good performance from him. And let's watch this again because it was an early slip here. There it is. Just didn't fully seem to commit to that left slap out. Was yeah. always short on it. Yeah, it was quite powerful. Maybe wasn't like quite able to or didn't quite manage to generate the necessary power. We were just talking about the, the time limit before, but Philip Schenk was on the wall for a really long time. It was five minutes and 18 seconds I'm seeing on the on the results app. So with a total of six, that's not like a lot. Of, that's probably enough time, but it's not a lot of time to, to get to the end from there. Yeah, he either timed it beautifully or not quite enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those, isn't it? So Helen Jinkor comes out. She was uh, part of the route setting team last year and decided that she had more that she wanted to do in terms of competing. So it's, uh, she changed back to the athlete side rather than being on the route setter side. Yeah, she said that she said to me she felt like, you know, she can route set when she's old and now that she's still young, she wants to you know, keep uh, keep pushing with the with the comps and yeah, another climber who's looking in really really great shape and was so close to the finals in Chamonix, super super close. So, you know, hopefully, uh, maybe this will be the one. I guess we'll see. And Sam Abazu on the right. How good was he in Chamonix? Yeah, he's really uh, yeah, step not popped up out of nowhere by any stretch because he's um he's always been quite successful. But yeah, that was a, a big jump from him for sure. I've heard stories of how strong he is at uh, in the French training camps and the French selection camps sometimes. Like when he has his round, he's just untouchable. And I think in Chamonix, we really sort of saw a little bit of that from him. Minutes before he went out, he was doing one armors on the playground to our right. I was watching him do wow, it. Wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's that kind of a climber. Yeah, he looks, he, he looks different this year, I think, like in terms of just like his body shape, he looks like more athletic in the way that he's climbing. Um, and so I, I, I feel like there's maybe something that he's changed in his approach that is obviously working for him. So he cuts loose and gets the first of the men's rest. And on the left, Helen is just pausing. In that stretched out position with the right toe hook in. Having been deep into the route setting team, do you think that will play any sort of, not advantage to her, but do you think she knows more about what route setters are thinking? Um, I think I think there are lessons that you can learn from being a route setter, especially route setting like in a, in a competition environment. But I mean, a lot of the climbers here have set routes for competitions at varying levels. Um, I think I think in Boulder there's maybe a little bit more of a route setters trying, trying to construct a narrative um, for the round and how they want to make you feel and sort of traps, emotional and physical traps they want to lure you into. Uh, I think maybe in lead it's a little bit more straightforward than that in that you, you just have to, you have to climb and keep climbing and make good decisions. So I'm sure she's learned positive lessons from from those experiences. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if it'd be any kind of an advantage necessarily, but it's all part of the, part of the puzzle, I guess. Yeah, part of that experience, that toolbox as a climber yeah, you have to Yeah, for sure. So Sam in the frog squat, 
and he makes that look about as comfortable as anyone I've seen on it yet. And up he comes into the pocket. Keeps the toe in on the right to stop the swing and then kicks it out to the right. This is looking very good from him. Getting that little knee scum in there, which can make a big difference when you've climbed as much of the route as he has already. And he's managing to uh, to match and shake out on that blocked hold, which we I don't think we've seen too much of so far. Uh, Helen gets the double rest, rested in both the positions. She's looking really good here. Yeah. Starting to get a little bit of fatigue going, but if she can uh, stay focused and stay together. Sam comes down. And Helen is still going this push position when you're tired, takes everything. Fiddles with the clip, gets it in, makes a double clip, and now she'll be able to concentrate on the next few sequences. Things get crimpy from now on. Take advantage of the, the angle change and hopefully try to get a little bit back. But uh, yeah, she's gonna have to figure out a sequence to yeah, get she... through this, uh, this section a little bit less physically, I think. She's dropped right back down in order to rest and reassess. Still hasn't worked it out. This is some endurance to keep going. So trying to twist that right leg, anything. Oh, it's almost inevitable that was going to happen at some point. Yeah, when you when you start to see them climbing backwards, it's usually a good sign that things are maybe coming to an end. And you know, yeah, she was definitely unsure as to how she was going to do that. And I was quite, I was kind of surprised that she didn't go with that like high right heel hook. But maybe the left hands just they didn't feel in quite the right orientation to be able to do that. Still a, a, a good, you know, a good performance from her. My, I, if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it's probably not enough for a final in the end. She's in fourth place at the moment with still quite a few climbers to go. Um, but yeah, a, a respectable performance nevertheless. Yeah, it was good effort. She found the double rest well. well as our camera adjusts to the light, as darkness starts to descend here in Briançon, this was Sam Avazu. He did so many karate style moves like that with kicking his feet that uh, I thought that was just going to be another one. Yeah, he was off. He was off pretty suddenly. I think watching him climb, I was maybe thinking he would go a little bit higher, and it just kind of uh, came apart, unfortunately. So Helen looked disappointing, but it was great performance from her. She waves to the crowd, and now we have our next few coming out. Vita Lukan from Slovenia and her teammate Luka Potica on the right. Both of these athletes have potential to make finals and really when you look down the list of the athletes that we have to come, almost every single one of them could be in a final. So things are gonna get very close from now onwards. So Luka gets his comp off into the slopers as does Vita Lukan. She'll be one who enjoys that middle sequence. Luca with his right knee strapped. That was new from Chamonix a couple of weeks ago. Don't think it's an injury, more of a prevention thing. Keep an eye on it. Vita Lucan is just adjusting her feet back and forth. And again. Luca as well, as well being slow and precise with his movement. So high heel in for Luca. He rocks up on that heel and gets stood up into that bicepy move we we're chatting about. And then Vita Lucan eyes up this next physical section of the route. Remember to keep an eye on the top eight on the right hand side of your screen. That's our leaderboard. No tops for the men or women. Thirty-five plus of uh, Ryu and Luca and uh, Hannah Moyles looking pretty impressive at the moment. 
Yeah, it would be interesting to see the, the sequence that the athletes use in order to get through that section. Every, every climber has kind of gotten there and <laughs> looked like there was not much else they were really able to do. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what we, you know, what solution they're able to come up with for that. Yeah, it's getting towards that time. We want to see some tops out on the field. So Vita powering her way through as we'd expect on the snake sequence. The jug is coming, upgrades the left hand. Flips the feet, gets the jug, cuts loose. And she'll now take a second to breathe. Luca bumps that left hand into the pinches. Looking good, his pacing is really steady. Same with Vita, both looking uh, pretty chill so far. I haven't really looked in doubt through any of the sequences. Yeah, so far not one of those routes that has a lot of different ways of doing it, especially for the men. It seems like there's a there's quite a, an obvious path through the first part. Yeah, I think so. I think there's like a little bit of variation through that sort of like big lock off um, to the pocket sequence that we just saw Luca do then. I think Jules Marchelon had a really good sequence through that part where he kind of like came under with his left and did this really comfy looking lock off. Um, but yeah, fairly straightforward. Whereas the women's, on the other hand, we've seen a lot of different methods and they've had a very like strong impact on, you know, how much further the climbers have been able to go. Yeah, Vita enjoying the crimps there. Our camera on the wall showing how small they are, looking it off, closing the crimp. And then Vita is in this power press of a move. Still looking really rock solid. And she had another finals to her tally. Wonderful blue in the sky as our wall is floodlit. Lovely sequence as he kicked his left leg through that. But this is really where you've got to dig deep. Watch on the right-hand side of your screen. As Lucas starts to push down, that hand will change you into a palm. Still hasn't looked in doubt. He still looks like he, he's forgotten that this route's supposed to be hard. He's just kind of warming up on it. And he nailed the foot placement as well, didn't he, yeah, to adjust? Yeah, absolutely. Like, hasn't really made any mistakes so far. And Vita Lucan is nearing that high point. Remember, there's only a couple of holds and it's going to change. She's on 35. She can just make one more move. Full move. She'll jump into the lead. And Luko we as go. well. Oh, he might top this out. He sets up for the final jump. Up he comes. Easy. <laughs> so easy. Oh, my God. Wow, lovely from him. That was, oh, oh we lose. comes down. Vita, but she's Sorry, Vita. Uh, still taking a new high point. That was absurd. He made that look so cruisy. There was, I don't think I saw him have to fight or really try all that hard through. I still don't think he's tired. It, he doesn't look pumped now. No, 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 he should do a double. <laughs> that thing. Can we send him back? Just go well, again. Yeah. Extra points. Well, that was the final move. Nah, just the just like the confidence with which he just sort of dingle dangled off that last hold, you know, he he felt like he had it as well. I don't think that was the uh, I don't think we saw the limit there. So more to come from him and we'll see it tomorrow in the finals. The finals are taking place at eight PM Central European time. Both the teammates lead the stage. Vita a little disappointed not to have topped it out. She was certainly close. I think, uh, yeah, 38 plus with that one, I think is going to be a pretty respectable score. Like we said, things can really change with that last few climbers. But uh, yeah, she managed to put in a really good one. I wouldn't be surprised if, if it ends up being enough, but we'll wait and see. Well, we have 10 climbers to go. Futaba Ito from Japan. She's in action now. And then for the men, that is Stefano Gisolfi, who, if you remember last year's finals, Stefano did something pretty impressive. <laughs> sort of how he, he, he fell off and yet 
held onto a volume. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he just, like, compressed the side of the volume and... And stayed on somehow, yeah. yeah. Inexplicably. Yeah, it was a very special move. Go back and watch that if you haven't. It's on his social media somewhere. You can see that. So Stefano Gasolfi gets going in Briançon, a place he likes to climb in. Looking like a bit uncomfortable so far. Yeah, Steph, he hasn't quite found his he hasn't quite found his mojo this year yet, I don't think. Not quite. And he yeah, I think he took some time to go and train in Innsbruck in between the last comp and this one and from what I could gather he's, you know, feeling a little bit better and feeling a little more ready. Um, but yeah, just 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 through that initial sequence he looked a little unsure, you know? Well, keep an eye on Stefano Gasolfi. Futa by Ito, though, is feeling fairly comfortable at the moment. She could make finals. Yeah, her lead shape is looking really, really great straight off the, especially straight off the bouldering season. Um, one of the few Japanese climbers who just kept going, essentially, um, you know, when some of the others went home to, I guess, train for uh, the competitions next year and the combined comp at the end of the year at their, you know, home competition for them. Yeah, she's just uh, kept going and is, is looking still in really good shape. It's really impressive, I think, to be able to manage the manage the onslaught of competitions that we sometimes have to face uh, and, uh, and, and stay in good shape the whole way through. Yeah, and impressive to establish herself as a, a real go-to on the Japanese team as well considering yeah. the depth in that squad and how much they could rotate the athletes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with uh, Paris coming up, being strong in lead and Boulder is really important, not only for, you know, making the Olympics and performing well there, but just for maintaining selection and funding within your nation, you have to be a, you know, a contender for an Olympic spot and for an Olympic medal. So she's making her play for Paris. Stefan Gasolfi beginning to climb his way into this route, looking more comfortable now. Just got a quick little view of our of our crowd, which is massive, even now, <laughs> just for the semi-finals and for our final tomorrow, it'll be even bigger, I'm sure, assuming that the weather holds out for us. Yeah, I haven't actually checked the weather. Fingers crossed on that one. I think last I checked, it was supposed to rain, yeah. um, which sounds about right for Briançon. It's always... <laughs> gets quite wet here. Oh, I think in the evening, actually, we should be all right. Okay. So improving through the day. <laughs> so Futaba Ito with the heel and the toe locked in. She's on the rest. Stefano as well. He's resting in a very interesting position, taking a long time on this move. And it's one of the things he's good at is finding those rests. Yeah, he got that little toe hook. Um, I think the back of that foot volume is quite sharp. I think there's quite a good edge on it. Um, and one of the routes has actually said to us that it's quite advantageous for them to find that toe hook. It makes a big difference. It definitely did for him. Yeah, yeah. he's looking good now. And Futab is getting a pretty cruisy rest there and then just losing her feet and again taking another one of those jug wrestling swings that we saw before. Yeah, we saw Iliaria fall on that move early on, letting the feet swing back too much. Stefano drops down into the undercling well. She's taking the other rest as well. You can see why the route setters didn't really think it was on. It's kind of all round the corner, that right yeah, here. Yeah, I think there's a lot of like specific planning that goes into being in the right position to be able to, like we saw with Molly, how she ended up having to get that toe hook in and it just, it just was a completely different sequence of climbing. Starting to see the elbows come up for Futaba. A little bit of fatigue coming in, I think. If she can make her way into this press, she might be able to get a little bit more back. Big move up and a slap, and she doesn't make it. You're right, burnt out there. So Futaba, unlikely to make finals. Stefan Gasolfi still has a chance as he comes up. He got COVID a couple of weeks ago. That's why he wasn't at Sham. So hopefully he's bounced back from that. That could explain maybe that nervousness at the beginning, but he needs to get this right foot in the correct position straight away. It's very hard to adjust, and he's not finding it yet. Jumps. 
Yeah, and they're really seeing the importance of having a <laughs> good level of mobility. I think he's he's not a climber that's p particularly well known, or I wouldn't say mobility is a is a strength of his. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, I think that was the the main culprit for his his yeah, demise. Yeah, get on the right route. foot up. Yeah, and it, it just wasn't happening. And obviously, he must have been he must have been fatigued enough that he felt like it wasn't worth sticking at it because he just you know kept going uh just went for the plus and he was off and yeah Futaba just kind of missed the she went for the jib she looks like she hit the jib but I don't know she just wasn't like engaged enough when she hit it and I think sometimes when you get really pumped like your ability to contract quickly and like your ability to react to sensation can be altered sometimes and it kind of looked like a case of that she just hit the hold and wasn't able to close her fingers um, as as quickly as she would have liked. So we don't think that will be finals for her. But Colin Duffy is out for the men at the back. And then Natsuki Danny for the women comes onto the stage. Colin Duffy is, uh, well, he's <laughs> certainly a finals contender. He's potentially a winner as well. So, yeah, took his, uh, took his first ever win. Uh, in bouldering in Innsbruck and then a couple days later he took his first ever lead win in Innsbruck um, he's another climber who has been saying that he's definitely feeling the fatigue um, but he looked in really good shape in the qualifications so I think it uh, I think he's got enough in the tank to you know have another finals performance if he if he climbs well yeah he didn't make the final in Chamonix now Natsuki Tani Got a uh, silver medal for the World Games in Birmingham. So she's on form. Fifth in Sham. Can she get into another finals here this evening? That's what she has to do to get there. Well, that's the men's. Luca with the only top so far. Colin Duffy, Duffy slow and steady to start off with. And that's Suki Tani as well. Just making sure she doesn't make any mistakes early. She'll know. Well, these athletes will have an idea because of the time, but we're seeing fairly long runs here, getting high on the wall from a lot of them. Yeah, definitely seeing climbers like, no one I've thought has looked like they're going to run out of time, but, you know, they're using up the time that they've got, that's for sure. Quite long routes, I think, well into the mid-40s in terms of holds for each route, I think. They're both, both similar length. I think the women's route looks a little bit shorter in terms of like the the actual length along the axis of the route the men's meanders a little bit more but the women's has a little bit more uh intricacy in the sequences there's lots a lot more sort of like bumps and little tricks and that sort of thing that you've got to piece together yeah a bit more complex for the women colin did a big cut loose move and i think that's one of those instances where it's not Sometimes when athletes cut loose like that, it's either through desperation or maybe they made a mistake. For him, I think it's a choice. Yeah. He's really good at those kind of moves. Yeah, some, I mean, sometimes, a lot of the time, you know, you need to be keeping your feet on the wall. But sometimes the most efficient way is to just cut loose and swing your feet around to another, another section of wall. Plus, you get some great photos. Oh, yeah. And as we said before, you know, it's, it's always about finding the, uh, the photo opportunities. Like, number one goal when you're on the wall here. <laughs> There you go. You've heard it. Heard it here first. So Colin has the toe hook, and a lot of these athletes coming through now are spotting that. What is that? He's double stacked a knee bar as Colin Duffy right now. That is cool to see. It, I, want, I, I was wondering how much he was getting back from that, actually. Yeah, not maybe a huge amount, but I'll give that full. They should get a plus for that. That was really good, good to see. Style points. Yeah, style points. Double stack knee bar. Well, he continues now. And that's Suki Tani, she is on the rest as well. Getting that high heel in, looking pretty, pretty comfy. This is where we really start to see a sort of like different class of athlete come through. The sections that looked really intense look really cruisy now. Um, and you, 
you almost forget what the route looked like initially. Like, oh yeah, you know, the first three quarters are easy when the first three quarters really weren't easy when we first saw saw people stepping out onto the wall. Absolutely, the, the cruxes that you think were there, they aren't really. Oh, well, Colin is through what we thought was the lower men's crux. It still does look tricky and another big move from him. And again, this stack knee bar thing he's doing, he's crossing. He's not really stacked that one. He's putting his foot on his on his left knee and this, then getting yeah. an e-bar in. Yeah, this one looks like he's gotten a little more out of it than the last one. Um. I watched you, Campbell. Actually, you taught me something about uh, stacked oh, yes. feet with the two feet. Oh yeah, my I think my feet were really yeah. I had like a really bad foothold, really far away, and I put my one leg over the top of the other just because it puts more more of your total body weight into the foothold. Um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, like just like one of those little things. We're seeing Natsukitani looking really close to high point, chalking up through the crux as you do. Yeah, it's casually cruising, coming off that silver medal, remember at the World Games. And Colin is in a very awkward position, but yeah, makes look, it work. Both athletes looking really, really confident. Natsuki uh, most likely securing herself a spot in the final with this right now. Potentially even, uh, to the top of the route. It'd be good to see if she can get that right foot up. She's only got a jump left. So Natsuki Tani will prepare herself. Colin falls, he's in seventh. That might not be enough. Natsuki Tani pops. I think his score hasn't updated yet though. Okay, so further up. He'll be. So Natsuki Tani just had a little... Yes, yeah, that's pretty. another 41 plus. Okay, so he's, he's back up the leaderboard. Yeah, so on count back, he'll go into into the second place. Okay, so good work from Colin Duffy. And Natsuki Tani isn't looking happy yet. I think she will be when she sees the scoreboard. Third place, sorry, I forgot about uh, <laughs> Taisei. <laughs> yeah, again, Taisei coming out so early on, making an impact. Well, the athletes meet to join, and then they will walk down the centre of the stage and exit. And look, Colin's going the other way. He's <laughs> Colin is confused on stage. You get there. There we go. So the athletes leave, and May, May Kotaki and Sean Bailey are out next. Let's watch this move from Colin Duffy. Cut loose all over the shot. Big dynamic sequences. Interesting climbing from Colin, and that's the final move that got him. Natsuki Tani had everything set up, didn't get the left foot properly on the hold. I think she was falling a bit before that. So, with the USA, Sean Bailey, he's up. And on the left, that is Meika Taki. A lot of Japanese athletes in this top 10 for the women. And the second half of our comp. Some big names coming for the men as well. Jesse Gruper, Satoni Yoshida, Alex Magos. There are our last three out. And for the women, Chianso, Yanya Garnbrett, and Laura Rogerut, they're our final three. So, big names to come as we near 10 p.m. here in Europe. Hello if you're joining us from wherever you're watching around the world. It's lovely to have you. Make sure you return for the finals tomorrow at 8 p.m. So Sean Bailey is climbing well. None of that hesitancy we saw from Stefano Gasolfi. I think uh, this is the point in the in the semi-final where we start to see our top eight as well. After these climbers, we'll know who's made it and who hasn't. So it starts to get really interesting here. You, you get on the maths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start, start always counting, like, okay, this is the worst that this person can finish, but, you know, if this person does this, and, oh, this person might fall on this move, like, so much, such a, 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 like, a guessing game, it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I know people uh, at home like to play the game as well. So, Sean Bailey thought about a heel, changed it into a, well, a nothing move, really, not really using it for the left foot. Really getting a similar way to Colin with that jump. Great footwork from Sean Bailey as well. I remember he hasn't tried this route before. This is on-site format. It's 
figuring it out as he goes. Those black holds on the wall looks like holds near his left knee. That's to block a bolt to make sure the athlete doesn't stand on it. Although I'm not quite sure why there isn't one on some of them. Sometimes the placement of the bolt blockers is interesting. <laughs> so, there have definitely been a few times we note that uh, there's one bolt that you would very easily stand on accidentally. Oh, Meikotake just, uh, I think she lost her left foot as she did the big move out. It's quite a big span for her, so probably hard to keep that tension. Um, and yeah, and she was gone. Yeah, early slip from her. We'll see a replay after Sean finishes it. But yeah, I mean, it's blocked there, for example. There seems to be a bolt right there almost that he might brush. Yeah, yeah, sometimes I think it's rarely, you rarely step on the bolts with drawers in them. Um, usually you have a better idea of where they are. Uh, yeah, but sometimes you see some bolts, you'll see a blocker on one and then not on another, and you're like, hang on a second, like, it feels like it would be quite easy to step on that, and maybe it's behind the volume or something, but ultimately, you know, we do have to know where they are and, and do our best not to but it is it is nice when the it is nice to see the root setters like take that extra bit of time to uh to cover them up for us because I, I stood on a bolt last year and it's pretty devastating to climb you know most of the route and then get marked down 20 holds lower yeah i agree it's the worst thing that can happen and yeah. it, it, as much as we can eliminate that it's got to be a good thing so yeah absolutely i like to see them so Sean Bailey making the slot look like a jug as he tries to adjust his hands around the rope. Now jumps out to the left. Looked like he licked his fingers there. As I he think came he through. was blowing on his fingers. So like any, maybe there was some like chalk or dust from one of the holes that was still stuck around. He's just blowing it off his fingers to keep them clean, essentially. So Sean Bailey is silhouetted on that wall at the moment, hanging up there. He gets through the foot placement move. Keep an eye on the leaderboard on the right. He's in ninth at the moment, now gets upgraded into eighth. Thought about pinching it, turned it into a crimp. And yeah, that will be not enough for finals ultimately just too many people getting the plus from hold 41 so sean bailey maybe not doing enough I and mean, he's in at the moment but there's some big big names coming so he takes a deep breath eyes oh, flicking around trying to find a scoreboard i'm sure to work out where he's at and here's mekotaki again yeah you can see the left foot just went and she wasn't yet in a stable position to be able to hold the compression. It just <laughs> all kind of happened a little too fast and she was gone. So a straight mistake from her. Sean Bailey looks a bit annoyed at himself for coming down there, but didn't, didn't look that confident through that sequence. Yeah, you, you obviously, you don't know where anyone else has climbed to, um, but often you have a feeling, you know, like, especially someone like Sean who's made quite a few finals before, like you have an idea of what it takes and sometimes you climb and you just feel that you haven't done enough. And you know, sometimes you absolutely have and it's, it completely exceeds your expectations. But yeah, I think, he, I think he had some kind of sense that that wasn't the, you know, exactly what he needed to do. So we'll have to wait and see. I need a lot of men to fall early for him to get through. Well, Kokoro Fuji, he's on the right. And on the left, it is Mia Krampel. The Slovenian team really seems to come to life in the lead season. Yeah, absolutely. So Kokoro Fuji is underway in climbing, and Mia Krampel as well. She looks good in Chamonix making finals. Yeah, she's, um, I think she, at the start of the season or kind of in the European Cups, another one of the climbers who was feeling a little like not quite there yet, not quite ready. Um, but yeah, she absolutely has like pulled it together and is having some really strong performances again. Kokoro gets the heel up. Going past the clip for Mia a little bit there, but managing to reel it back in. 
Well, if you watch us since the beginning, you know where these hard sequences are, where they're coming up. And currently, it's all good for these athletes. They will be expecting to cruise through this section. Although we did lose Meikataki, uh, sorry, Meikataki a couple of seconds ago. Yeah, I think the routes, are, the routes are complex enough that it's really easy for the climbers to make little technical errors. So it's, I don't know, I've enjoyed these routes because I felt like when they're climbed well, it looks effortless. But yeah, as soon as you make a little mistake or do something a little early or a little late, not quite in the right sequence, um, it's, it's really easy to, you know, make those sort of compounding fatiguing errors or just, you know, lose the route completely. And conditions have changed here in the stadium a bit. I'm watching lightning above the mountains behind the climbing wall. It feels a lot more humid in the stadium, closer. Yeah, for sure. It definitely, there's um, less of a breeze than there was earlier. It's, it's quite cool, but yeah, the air is a little more dense. So will that affect our final few? Oh, oh and look, Kukuro falls very early. I'm going to say potentially will. Was that, was that the most genius view. call I've ever said? <laughs> Maybe right on time. <laughs> Nailed it. Well, Mia Crample is still underway though. And it's the atmosphere as well in the state. I think it's, it's something to do with the lightning coming. Everything's just got a lot more tense suddenly. So hopefully at home you're leaning forward as I am watching this action here. Mia Crample is one move away from the rest. She'll bring that right hand through. Gets the toe locked in, into the rest, and now she'll take a moment to breathe. Quite a, quite a lot of lightning, actually. I hope that's not coming our way. Exactly. So that's, that's what's going on around us, ladies and gentlemen, just to add to some of the drama. The classic Alpine storm is on the horizon. So Mia gets all wrapped up, trying to get the heel locked in. Clean now. She goes with this high heel, finds the second rest. And shakes out with that heel locked in. So, she nears the head wall. Take as much time as she needs here, knowing what's coming next. She'll know that, that just by looking at it, how <laughs> hard that top sequence is. Yeah, still looking good, but uh, a little uh, different sequence than what we've seen from some of the others, I think. Power to cut loose on that crimp. Yeah, you can tell that she's still fresh, I think, to be able to just uh, so easily bear down on that crimp. So now she reaches up, and as if on cue, the wind picks up here in the stadium as the storm comes closer. Mia Crample is near, well, she's on the head wall now. Oh, falls coming through. That's seventh, that is unlikely to be enough either. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Getting to the uh, sort of nitty gritty end. Yeah, we are coming close here. So next out will be Manon Healy from France and Sasha Lehman. Yeah, another replay there of Kokoro Fuji. And yeah, I, I mean, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with his foot placement. It just blew. I guess it, there would have been some kind of minute movement that he made that generally speaking, there's a, uh, you know, ah, and there was Mia was a foot slip as well. She just didn't quite get the foot high enough and uh, she wasn't quite on the foothold and she thought she had it and she didn't and then she was gone. Well, a shame for her. She's going to be on the right on the edge of that danger zone. Right, next two up, they enter on the right. That is Manuel Healy. She comes through and Sasha Lehman, who won the World Games for lead in Birmingham. So he's back in action and maybe he's got a bit of a confidence boost. From that, uh, from that gold medal last week. And we're just trying to watch. That was Kokoro Fuji's fall there. So Sasha Lehman looks up at the wall. And I feel like for him, he's been on the verge of something this season, but perhaps needed a bit of confidence. Maybe it's given it to him. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully, he's um, he's yeah, he's not the most 
for the for the caliber of his climbing, I don't think he's the most like consistent climber. I remember in youths especially, he would often like top both the qualification list, uh, qualification routes, and then and then miss finals. You know, he has a very um, like quick and snappy style, and yeah, sometimes it, that is to his advantage, and sometimes not so much. Well, we watched him in Chamonix last week falling on that big jump move he just didn't quite get the range on and it can happen to him yeah for sure for sure he's like super super strong super well trained like has a really high capacity to climb hard and then sometimes it's just like the specifics of performance i don't know it doesn't quite come together for him um but you know we've seen him win world cup uh world cup before so it's it's definitely uh in his in his range yeah, Manuel Healy has been very impressive for Team France. She's regularly making top tens. She sets herself up, gets the right heel in. So if you're just joining us, we're towards the end here of our semi-final. Last few athletes to go. A possible storm on the horizon <laughs> and a high scoring round, but few tops. And so far, not bad separation. I know there's three of the women on 35 plus, but apart from that, everyone is. Yeah, a little tight on the men's. I think a lot on the 41 plus. I think we'll see, we'll probably see some of those make, making it through to the final. Maybe not the 41 pluses now, but I think there'll definitely be people with 41 plus going through to the final. Well, there it is. Yeah, you're right. Lots of 41 pluses and a 41, Sean Bailey. He's definitely going to be pushed down. So, Tyse Homer. What an impressive performance from him. So Sasha cuts loose and swings, nails the jump this year. No such shamany nightmares for him. And Manuel Healy is not looking that comfortable, trying to work out how to get through this cleanly. That is the position, but she's got to unlock that toe and nearly yeah, falls. Really, really powerful swing there. She, I, to me, she looked in control but yeah she's kind of pulling out all the stops here she's got like a little scum on with her knee on the side of that hold um i think sometimes when you aren't finding quite the right sequence through things it can just uh get into a little bit of a funk but maybe she can take this uh rest if she's able to do one or two more moves and then uh hopefully you know, reset bring, a bit yeah bring things back in yeah, because so far she's definitely not looked super flowy or super comfortable. She just lost a huge amount of chalk from a bag as well. It's still gusting around in the breeze. So Manuel Healy with a high right heel hook gets the quick draw swinging. And Sasha Lehman now having to thug out this drop down move. Which he gets in. So both athletes having to work hard. Manuel actually looks pretty comfortable with that high heel. Yeah, now she's, you know, she's definitely making the most of this rest. Although we've seen from a lot of the other climbers who've gotten their feet up high like this, st uh, struggle to move back out left again. So it'll be interesting to see how she sort of manages that maneuver. But for now, she's looking really good and she looks like she's been able to kind of reel it back in. I think that clip might have been a bit of an error though. Because the problem with that right heel is nothing, it's on. It's just pressing in and she... Yeah, and it's it's quite like clipping out like that. Even if you're on a good hold, it's it's quite a lot of engagement in your shoulders and it can it can tax you quite a lot. More than, more than you might expect, I think. So Sasha's on the press move, reaches up. The left hand with the crimp. But very quickly, you get rid of that bad left hand. The second you get the palm down, you got your weight through it. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get that palm in the right position, he's got the foot in the right position too, I think. The center of gravity came a little bit out from the wall, but Manuel Neely's looking pretty good again. Yeah, now she moves into 11th. Sasha tries to stand up. He's ninth, oh. now eighth. 41. 41, yeah. Again, unlikely to be enough. That plus is is all the difference, because if he had that plus, he would, um, I think he'd be guaranteed to be in, but not, not quite. So a plus so. and a plus is defined by center of mass and hand moving towards the next hold. Manor Healy, it looks like she was falling off from the very beginning and she's still there. Yeah, impressive little battle she's had so far.
Now she's got to figure out how to match this upper crimp, and she's on it now. Oh, oh drop back down, nearly caught it. She's on the edge here, needs to get the left foot over. Yeah, as soon as she went out left with that, with her feet still over to the right, I was pretty confident that it was it was over for her. It's just like so, especially she's not the tallest climber, so it's like that would just be so much length and tension to control, and and then she would have to release that tension in order to be able to adjust her feet, and uh, it wasn't going to happen. And, and I think she knew that, but it was it was too late. But considering. You know, some of the errors she made early on in the route, I think that was a, a really, really commendable fight for sure. I was like really impressive that she managed to get as far as she did. I totally agree. She struggled getting to the snake sequence down yeah. early and still kept going. That's the sort of climber when um, when you're on the bubble for the next round, uh, like those climbs can be really frustrating when you think you're like, oh, this person looks like they're gonna fall. Because, I mean, it's not a nice mindset, but ultimately, you know, <laughs> to progress, you do need climbers to fall below you. So yeah, you're thinking, oh yeah, I might have it on this one. And then they just keep clawing their way onto the next hole and the next hole. And before you know it, they've like, taken over your high point or whatever it might be. And but. You know that's the game, and what she did is like exactly what you want to be able to do in that in that circumstance. Is just it's grit your teeth and grind yeah, through, exactly, yeah. and just keep fighting and never feel like it's you know not worth it or like you've already screwed it up. Like anything can happen if you just sort of keep pulling it together. Well, Yannick Floe is underway. He won his first gold in Brixen for Boulder. And he's consistently making finals. He's really in some form. Yeah, well, this year was his first uh, first ever lead final in a World Cup. And then since then, I think he hasn't missed a final. It was, and it was, it was such a battle for him to make it to finals as well. I remember him finishing ninth at a comp, and it was like he got knocked out by an appeal or something like that. Like, he'd left the venue um, confident that he was in finals, like, ready to go for the next uh, round, and then the results were released and everything had changed. And, and now he's just, yeah, on it every time. I think he, he looks like he's gained a little bit of that endurance that maybe he was missing. He has a crazy amount of power. Um, but yeah, I think he was struggling with that sort of just basic root fitness. And it looks like he's got a lot more of that now and is able to fight through a lot more climbing in general. Yeah, it's definitely coming for him. And on the left, Natalia Grossman, well, she was the overall winner for 2022 for the boulder. Looked really good. Hasn't quite found the same level in the lead yet. Yeah, not quite, but I mean, she took the, she took a podium in Chamonix and I think there's, um, you know, definitely with the bouldering season being, you know, well, overlapping with the lead as well. Like there's only so much time to really gain that lead fitness, especially for her wanting to, you know, almost queen, clean sweep the bouldering season. So I think she's been taking these last few weeks to build her fitness back up and be able to try really hard on hard routes. You see, I, I get the impression sometimes that some of these who are definitely tied into the Olympics, like someone like Natalia, is almost using this season especially to train, to go, look, I may not be the best lead climber in 2022, but by 2023, I'll have that experience to be able to combine both disciplines and, and get better like that. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think she definitely, you know, came into the lead season, like she's focused on each competition and having the best performances she can in each individual event. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I'm sure for, you know, cause she's only been at the top level for quite recently, honestly. Yeah. So, um, you know, compared to a lot of the other climbers, despite her immense success, she still has a lot that I'm sure she's still learning about herself and about the competitions. That's a very good point. It's easy to forget with her because of how many golds she's got. Yeah, you forget that she, um, it was like, you know, World Championships in Hachiyoshi, she wasn't in semifinals. And now she wins every single World Cup. It's uh, She's a, a really, really remarkable um, success story, I think. Well, can she do it again here tonight in Briançon? She's nearing the difficult section for the women. And Yannick Floe has a trademark shoulder move from him. Makes it work though. And now he begins this press move up with the left hand on the crimp. That crimp will quickly disappear though once he's got his palm down. And Natalia as well is setting up for her press move. Interesting how both 
Both routes have a similar sequence of uh, moves to get through that lip or past the lip. Yeah, I think the route setters had a little bit of a, a little bit of a theme that they wanted to go for in each of the routes. Yannick looking really strong, a little bit different. He went opted to go for the left foot rather than right in that in that high step, which I think was pretty comfortable for him. And 41 plus, oh. or probably 41 plus. Uh, we'll see what the judges decide. Yeah, it is up to them. We can certainly have our opinions, but they make the final call. Well, Natalia Grossman moves up into the top eight. 32, De similar. Definitely going to need a little bit more, though, if they think, I think if she plans on staying there. So she looks down at the clock. <laughs> that smile, it was captured so beautifully in Chamonix with the PTZ camera. She told me she was looking at the scoreboard, not posing for a picture, but there's a, uh, there's a great shot of her across the screen. It looks very much like she is posing for a picture. I, I, think, it's, I think it's very much like a, a psychological tactic. I think it's like... Um, the smile, you mean? Yeah, 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 smile. I think it's very much a decision to smile, and I'm sure the emotion is genuine, but it's like just reminding herself to smile, uh, you know, takes the pressure off a little bit, which I think when you've had such an intense... Like, winning consistently, would have to be really, really intense and really, really uh, quite hard on the mind. And so I think reminding herself to like just smile for a moment is probably really important part of her preparation. Yeah, and like a positive attitude as well. You know, you've got to go into these things thinking you're going to top it. Yeah, she's um, she's getting close to this one as well. It's still looking like she's got some gas in the tank. She'll put this clip in and then... Uh, oh, that elbow started to shake though. She makes the make clip. Try to make a final push for the top. This is it. Can we see our first women's top? Oh, a real fight from Natalia Grossman. Snatches for the crimps. That's not going to be a top, but it is second place. So that will see her through to the final then. She's in. Yeah, that hold, we got like a nice little close-up of the last hold that she had solid on. And it's, um, I, I know the hold it is. It's very, very slopey and very flat. So it's like, it's enough that you can squeeze it, but you can't really like chill or chalk on it or anything like that so um yeah i think once she was it was very it's very active position and so once she was on there for a while trying to figure out the clips and figuring out her feet and that sort of thing i think there was just not a lot of energy left but really nice climbing from her and she looked really uh really convincing the whole way so natalia leaves job dump and her teammate but rabatu is up next she'll be the first out onto the stage there she is out, Yuri Kuza behind her, waiting for his turn. So here we go, final couple of athletes here in Briançon, France. Brooke strides onto the stage, positive from her. Immediately begins the air climbing that we're so used to, reminding herself of these sequences. Now, Stiller looking up, mapping out in his head. He's just 19 as well. He's got such talent in climbing at the moment. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. Yeah, very, very dense fields of really, really strong high-level climbers. And I think, um, I think there's just, oh no. Oh. Well, hang on a sec. So he comes down straight away and that will count. I think, does yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Un unless there was like a hold spinning or something, but didn't seem to be. It looked like he kind of just went for the wrong part of the sloper and he was off. Wow, well, you don't see that very often. That, there we go. That's like I said, rule of semifinals, guaranteed. Someone messes it up every time. It always happens. So is that it now? We definitely won't see it again, right? Well, I mean, it, it can <laughs> happen more than once, but oh, it no. always happens at least <laughs> once. I'm going to get nervous now next time. So Al Yurikuza falls incredibly low. We'll watch that again. So Brooke Rabatu has a stage to herself. Super unfortunate, though. It's always like so devastating to watch something like that happen. I remember last year in Chamonix, I watched a climber um, step up onto the first foothold of their qualification route, and then their foot blew, and they just hit the floor. Like they barely gone six inches off the floor, oh. and you just. It's like, what do you do? You haven't even clipped a draw yet. You just untie and you walk off the stage and that's it, it's done. And, you know, we started our qualification round at nine o'clock this morning, warm up opened at 7 a.m. And it's 
you know, 10 p.m. now, and yeah, it's been such a long day for him for that to happen. It's it's super gutting. Yeah, such a shame. He looked devastated as he walked off. Well, Brooke Rabatou is on the first third of her route. She's aiming for the eighth position where Manuel Healy is. 32 plus is where she needs to get to at least for a finals place, but probably more considering who's coming next. But as we just watched without, mistakes can happen. And it's hard to even class what happened to him as a mistake. It's just an incident, isn't it? It's just, it happens sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously a mistake, but it's, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you can step onto the wall with, like, a little bit too much confidence, I guess. Um, and, yeah. It's, it's definitely, it was an interesting fall to see. Like, he grabbed, the, looked like he went for the wrong part of the hold which is unusual to happen that low on the route because you can see the hold so clearly from the ground. But I mean, it, you know, in the in the pressure of a semi-final, who knows what's going through his mind. There's a, a lot that can go wrong. And unfortunately that time it did. So that was his story of the semi-finals. Brooke is still writing hers. She enters the snake. She needs to get up to the head of it. There it is. Well, that juggy tight hold is, and it is a good hold. It's just in an awkward position, around the corner. It's very flat behind, though. It doesn't have like a like an edge or a dip or anything like that. So it's another one of those holds that it's only good from the right angle. Like you can't really just squeeze it. Yeah, and we know how good Brooke is with these heels. She's in fact the bane of the root setters' lives. I know this because they've told me. She's someone they really have to consider when setting these routes because she can find heels where other people can't. Yeah, her footwork is exceptional. Like, rather controversially, we've seen her make use of even just bolt holes in the wall, um, and not just like not just like a little smear. Like, to stick her foot in the bolt hole and like rock over it and and genuinely wait these tiny little crevices in the wall, and it's um, it's super impressive. Yeah, you talk about precise footwork. I remember being told when I learned to climb at ninja feet when you're trying to be quiet on the wall. She's just the definition of that. She just flows through it. Yeah, it's it's really, really very precise and she doesn't make too many mistakes. But she's got a long way to go. She's on 20, well, now she's bumped up into 15th position, 25 her score. And again changed, 26 now. So she has that double rest. And now, really, it's just a case of seeing how much power you've got in your arms at the end of this part. Into the crimps now, gets that back toe. And it's, yeah, and even that section there, like, she didn't climb it necessarily as well as some of the other climbers, but she's just so overstrong that uh, you, would, you, don't, you barely even notice. Over strong, I like that. That's a good way of describing it. So Brooke comes out into that blocked crimp. Again, you have to be quite precise when you're tired. And then look at the way she adjusts that left hand. She'll flick that into a palm down. And then press through. Although, yeah, no, she doesn't. It's kind of a different style. Yeah, that made me a little nervous, that move there. I was not so sure. She didn't look like too solid, but again, like just really precise. Oh, barely kept that right toe on. Well, this is the business end of the route. She's in seventh at the moment. That's not guaranteed yet. Three climbers to go after her. Into the crimps, good angle to show how small they are. Now she needs to reach through and makes the pinch, which she does. And ah. stop. And like I said, that, that, that hold's just like so flat, there's not really much to it. And so with uh, going to it like that fast and that kind of almost out of control, I don't think it was quite going to come together. But still, that was a really nice climb and should be enough. It's guaranteed, I think, now with three yes. to go. So Brooks in the final. Our final taking shape in front of our eyes here. And this was the fall. Yeah, look, you just had such a weird one. Hopefully we can see that one more time because he stood up and just missed the sloper. Look, here we go. He's yeah. just not on it. Yeah, no, nowhere, not even close, unfortunately. 
and jumping off of his uh, right foot as well. If he was on his left foot, I think it would have been a little easier for him to like control the poor part of the sloper and maybe bump again. Um, but yeah, he just, he looked like he wasn't really thinking too much about it. He just pulled onto the route, ready to start climbing. And uh, yeah, maybe he could have slowed down a little bit, but really unfortunate mistake. Well, that was his semi-final. Laura Rogera versus Alex, well not versus, what we're talking about is next speed. And Laura Rogera is climbing with Alex Magos. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring speed ethics into lead climbing, how about that? Well, Laura finally got off the mark properly in Chamonix, did really well there. And Alex Magos, who was, uh, I'm not sure if he was Sunbathing or climbing for most of today? He seems to be half on holiday and half on a climbing comp. <laughs> Very relaxed. From Alex he, he, does have a, he does have that kind of vibe about him, I find. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm just having a good time. Like, I'm just climbing. It's ob climbing is obviously, like, super important to him. Like, he, this guy just lives and breathes his training. Um, the amount of volume that he does in his training is really uh, next level. But... Yeah, it, it, it's funny that he, it, knowing that, he gives off this vibe of like, oh yeah, whatever, it's cool, I'm having a great time. And you know that he's just like in the gym and out on rock, like working himself to the bone. Yeah, and his results and also his outdoor climbing results speak for themselves. He's one of the best, is Alex Magos. And no early mistake from him, so he will climb now towards that final position. Now, I'm looking at this route, thinking of Laura. There isn't a huge amount I don't think would sort of shut her down. We know occasionally she struggles with like big, big movements, mm. but. No, I, I don't, yeah, I, I agree. I don't really see anything necessarily that's gonna give her too much trouble. I wouldn't, I frankly wouldn't be that surprised if we saw a top from her even. Um, I think this route could suit her relatively well, as long as she, uh, yeah, you know, makes all the right decisions. It very much is that kind of route where, you know, putting a heel in one move too early or one move too late can like make a huge difference. And so you have to be really, really uh, calm and collected and smart about your sequence. Yeah, and Laura is good at when things go wrong, she can figure out different ways of doing it. In Innsbruck, she got all kind of stuck underneath the roof and somehow found a way out of it. She's got that resilience. Although well, she's having a little bit of trouble with this big move at the moment, but keeping that tension. And Alex cruises through what we thought was a very hard sequence of moves, and really most athletes after the cleaning break have made that look pretty simple. But Alex is uh, climbing quicker now as he snatches for the chalk, and this looks really awkward, this drop down. He's very high on it and has to go all the way back. Yeah, it's obviously didn't quite feel right about what he was doing. Take another stab at it. Yeah, better from him that time. So it didn't look like it cost him a huge amount by going back, better than fighting through and dropping that move. But he definitely didn't look like he was uh, keen to spend any more time in that undercling than he needed to. Again, another one, like Alex is not particularly tall, but it just uh, it didn't seem to suit him. Yeah, he swings out onto the slopers, drops down into the second one, and Laura is in her rest, and look at that position. Still on the wall as she dangles that arm down, getting rid of the pump. Checks out the clock while she's there. And Alex is in a... He hasn't got the foot seated properly, and yet, and now this is what happens when you don't. You have to do moves like this. Yeah, and once you, once you take that other hand or the other foot off, it's really, it is where it is, you know? And it's clearly having an effect on his, on the way he's able to move in these next sequences, but as long as he can get a plus off of this next hold, it should be enough. So Alex, nearing a finals place. Ooh, okay, well, we'll wait for that to be updated. This is a uh, judge's nightmare, I can imagine, when there's, when finals comes down to whether or not you've got the plus or someone else doesn't. You know, if it's going to be the difference between making the top eight or not, it's a Peel City. Uh, <laughs> and so it's probably going to be a, 
late-ish night of watching videos and trying to clarify and people, athletes stressing, coaches stressing. I wouldn't want to be them. I've just got to write a script instead. Much yeah. easier. No, I've been them. It's not fun. <laughs> have you? You've been a judge? No. Oh, I thought you meant the athletes. Oh, and the right. Coaches. I see. Yes, I, right. I have judged, actually, but not at a World Cup level. Okay, at, like, enough. national competitions. So Alex has fallen. Laura is on. And this is where Laura, I think, I don't want to curse her here, but I think she's going to be good at these moves. It's kind of grinding it out, just facing the pump. Yeah, she's got to find the right um, foot set up, though, I think, before she decides to move over there. Because if she keeps that left foot, like we saw with Manon, I, yeah, here we go. Yeah, she works it out, eh? but she's still awkward to get that right foot across. And she look, oh, she might fall here. That was well done. Oh, but so awkward here. But this is what she's good at doing. I find she's good at doing the nasty parts of climbing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's the that's the rock climber in her. I think is a bad it, hold. You know, used well. It doesn't have to be comfortable. You've just got to do it. Well, oh, this is exciting stuff. She holds that. That's where Brooke felt. Big scream. I think I just heard from her as well. Go on, Laura. So. There's the crimps coming up, but she could be about to go here. Oh, come on. Makes up an intermediate and then misses the crimp. Yeah, very impressive fight there. Really just shows how well Natalia climbed, though. That yeah. was, uh, yeah, she climbed really, really well, really smooth through that whole sequence. Well, we've got two athletes remaining, well, four in total. You can tell how overhanging that wall is the fact that Laura's on the ground rather than the stage. So it looks like Laura will be in the finals. She leaves. This was the cut loose coming into the rest. And this is Alex Magos. He made this move look really hard, dropping this right hand through. Look at this. Almost lost it. Bumps in, catches it. And that offending 41 moves that is causing palpitations for our judges. <laughs> yeah, it's, it becomes so, so, so specific as well as to what is going to be deemed a plus and what isn't. And, you know, if someone really deserves to be placed above another, it's, it becomes very stressful. I'm sure there'll be a lot of judges very meticulously watching that footage and ensuring that everything is, uh, is all the rules are upheld correctly. Well, here is Yanya Gambre. She reminds herself on the route of the route and Satoni Yoshida is on the right for Japan. So Slovenia versus against Japan. Not against, I keep saying that. <laughs> the two athletes climbing together. They're not against each other yet. So Yanya is underway. Just beaten in the qualies, but only by a point or so. He didn't catch it there, but the route setter on the right for Satoni was really very observant through that first move. I think everyone's had a, a bit of a wake up that anyone can fall at any point. Yeah, absolutely. And especially when, you know, two people from the same nation have probably viewed the routes together and it's, you know, entirely likely that they might make the same mistake as their as their uh, as their teammates. So yeah, definitely gotta be on on the top of your game when you're playing for a World Cup. I really take my hats off to the take my hat off to the belayers and qualifications as well because you really do sometimes get this massive depth of the field from climbers who are who've barely competed in their whole lives i mean obviously they're still at this elite level to be at a world cup but you know um certain countries just don't have the same depth as others and um yeah sometimes people come out and you know you, one climber will top the route another climber can barely do the first three moves yeah, scary as a belayer, that one. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So Yanya, it's interesting with her. She seems to have slightly changed her style this year. I think the the sort of like reckless abandon style really screwed her over in a lot of the comps in 2019. I think that was a really frustrating season for her um, because this 
just um, wealth of talent kind of came through and was very much keeping up with her. And maybe she'd kind of gotten used to being able to climb carefree. And I think this year it seems like it's, you know, she's taken that time to focus on lead. It seems quite important to her and she's not willing to like give it up for having, you know, just done something a little bit too quickly or with a little bit of a uh, recklessness, you know? And let's be honest, she wants to clean sweep this season. Like I, I think so. That's 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 the that's oh, we've oh. got another kind of low fall there. Yeah, that was Satoni Yoshida and immediately he was frustrated by that. We'll watch that in a sec. But yeah, I think and it's gonna be interesting to see as the season progresses and we get let's say that she continues to win and we get towards the end and she's on for that clean sweep. It's whether the nerves will start to play. And I know she's someone who can handle the nerves, yeah. but she does feel them. Oh, absolutely. I think she she always shows how she was feeling, you know, after the round, like is, she's so calm and so collected and then it uh, it all just comes down and, you know, the emotions really come through. I, I'm, I'm sure that there's some pressure she's putting on herself to if not clean sweep, you know, to perform. She's a she's an athlete at the top level of the sport, but yeah, I can only imagine what that feels like from her perspective. It's gonna be an interesting end to the season for sure. So Yanya now is on to where things get hard. There's a similar move to this in Innsbruck, this mantle style. So she's got to push up with the left easily through for Yanya. Gets that left foot up. Okay, so Yanya's in this sequence and has her feet straight away really in the right position. Looks right and left to work it out. Looking a little bit pumped at right arm. The veins starting to stand out. But a similar body position from Laura, hips very low. Yeah, 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 coming feet over to that left-hand side and really coming under those, those little cribs and the volume. So Yanya is one clip away here. It's definitely looking not crazy comfortable, you know? Like, she's starting to have to work for it, for sure. Hopefully she can keep the composure. I'd really like to see a top. It would be really nice. Yeah, strong. That was a move that shut down a lot of the women. She's up into fourth now. Well, second now. And Suki Tani, the only one to have gone further, but Yanya might be struggling. Shakes out the hand. There is a right side pull there. She spots it. Now she needs to get set up oh. for the jump. Comes off the right. I think she just dry fired off of that crimp. Honestly, that sequence, seeing someone in it, looked a lot harder than it looked from the ground. I was worried that that end was going to be kind of one of those, like, technical, not slab, but, you know, really, like, pressy finishes that you see climbers just completely deep pump on and cruise through. But, no, it looked really hard. It did, yeah. And she only spotted the side at the last minute, had a head turn the other way, then had to spot it, then get it. And... So no top from Yang yet, which means Natsuki Tani is still in the lead. Only Shan So can beat her now, coming into the final. And why is this important? Well, if the athletes get the same score in the semi-final, sorry, in the final, then it goes back to the semi-final. So this is the time when medals can be decided. Yeah, another foot slip, similar to Kokoro Fuji, but uh, a little bit further up the wall. Yeah, I'd like to see a, a replay of Yanya's fall just to get like a better idea of what happened. I think she just sort of like one hand clapped on the on the second last hold. Well, let's see it. So she had it. Body turned away. Got the side pull. Looked good. And yes, yeah, so she just it let just go. It just yeah. blew off. Yeah. Because there it is. She's in. Oh yeah, just yeah. straight fire. Boom. And there's not a lot when you can do you can do when that happens. So, Shan So and Jesse Gruper are together on the stage. Shan So won the quali round. And Jesse Gruper, we heard from him earlier on in the broadcast with the interview I did with him. An incredible season he's having. 
waiting for that goal. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen, our final athlete out tonight in Briançon. Finals taking place tomorrow. Only eight will make it through, and we have a feeling, certainly in the men's field, there might be a few appeals along the way. So potentially, potentially, I think I think when it, when the margins are that close, sometimes the uh, the attitude is, why not? You know, if it's gonna maybe make the difference have someone look over the footage again and something changes, puts your athlete or puts you in finals, like, yeah, people are willing to stake their bets on that, I think. Yeah, lose a bit of cash along the way. So, Shian So climbing slow and steady, as almost everyone has through the bottom of the women's. Jesse has this legendary fighting quality. He keeps on going. His, his lock-off is just unyielding. Like, I, I've never seen him be locking off on a hold and have it start to fail like it's like he just it just hits the brakes and it it won't move <laughs> once he's once he's in position he doesn't falter it's really crazy and i also i also feel like i never see his hands like open on a hold either it's like once he's closed his fingers on the hold he's on it locked in for the yeah, duration yeah, yeah yeah he could just st it looks like he could just stay there Oh, Jesse's resting down low. He's uh, he's definitely not the fastest climber, though, and ha has been known to have a little bit of trouble with the time. He was timed out in Villas. He did time out in Villa, exactly. He got a yellow card from that, which is, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a yellow card. Yeah, he, he didn't realize that they were calling him off the wall, and so he kept climbing, and then when he came down, they had to physically pull him off, yeah. and he came down, and they were like, "Yeah, you didn't listen to our instructions, so that's a yellow card." So you can get a few yellow cards in a season um, before there's, you know, a real big penalty. So it's a little bit of a shame because he really is like such a like nice, well-meaning guy. Like he, I could never imagine him, it's like outwardly refusing to come off of the wall. But uh, yeah, I was like, "Oh, you poor little thing." <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. He's not one of the usual suspects. But Jesse is climbing slow here. He's low down. I know in training he was getting his coaches to to time him and also like just uh, he'd be climbing and they would be like 40 seconds remaining even though he actually wasn't about to time out. Like just sort of simulating that pressure of realizing that you're running out of time and having to finish the route quickly. Um, so it's something that he's been aware of um, and is, is actively trying to work on through his training sessions, from what I've seen. Yeah, because we, we don't see a lot of athletes getting timed out, really. It happens every now and again. Yeah, especially in the men's. I, I think that, um, yeah, a lot of the men can't hold on for quite as long as a lot of the women can, and maybe we are just more reckless. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Shen So is through the overhang. And a really unique resting position, feet way out right. We need to get uh, everywhere over to the left to do the next part. Just a rocket of chalk to the floor from Jesse just then. Yeah, Jesse, again, is fairly tall and yet makes that drop down look good. But he won't rest there very long. It'll be awkward for him as a toe in. Shayun So is looking so impressive. Yeah, she's uh, not having too much trouble just yet. And she doesn't look like she's on the verge of having any trouble anytime soon. I'll tell you what, if she gets close to where Yanya did, this sets it up for a, a really good final tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're in for a really good final regardless after watching some of the qualification. Yeah, it's going to be tight for sure. So Jesse makes that dynamic move up with the left hand, drops in where Alex made it look quite snatchy, but easier from Jesse. Up Shane so goes, hasn't clipped yet, will do from this position. Still looking pretty confident. There's definitely some fatigue there, but she's got at least a few more moves in her, as but does Jesse for sure. Yeah, and they only need a few, both of them. Jess is coming up is to that 41. With the, the Yannick beta of going left foot through. So Shen So drops back down. 
and then comes up with a heel. Oh, wow. Fascinating. Okay. But then how's she going to get the right foot up? Yeah, but I feel like she needs it to be, she needs to change it to a toe perhaps yeah, now. Yeah, and it wasn't working out. So Shannon So doesn't top out. She's third. Jessie Grouper, though, still has an opportunity here. Score hasn't been updated. He's way up the leaderboard from that. One move away, and that is the top for Jesse Grouper, the only male athlete and the female athlete to do so. Jesse Grouper tops out. Oh, sorry, Luca. Sorry, second. So second male athlete to top out that route. Great effort from Jesse, and he will jump into the lead because of Fantastic. countback. Fantastic. That was really, really cool to see. Awesome work from Jesse. It didn't really look that troubling for him. No. No, as well. Like, yeah, him and Luca both kind of... Uh, Kind of walked it, really. I think it's hard to tell Jesse's style, you know, the way he locks off on things and it's kind of rigid, sometimes makes it look like maybe he's tired, but I don't think so. Yeah, really, really, really nice climbing. And that was Shan, so just had a very interesting foot beat, but I don't think it was the right one to get through that sequence. And Jesse popping up to the top. Awesome work from him. Well, that is it then for our semi-finals. Now, we will show you a leaderboard in a couple of seconds, but be aware that because of how close the scores are, especially for the men, things might change a little after the broadcast. Might not. Just something to bear in mind that appeals might be going through. Well, let's have a look at our leaderboard, shall we? The women's, Natsuki Tani in first position, 43 plus. Yanya Garnbrett second, Chen So. Laura Rogera, Natalia Grossman, Brooke Rabatu, Vita Lukin, and Ryu Nakagawa make up our top eight. Luka Rakovic just pushed down 35 plus, unlucky for her due to count back. And then the rest of our 26. After that, Claudia Gasolfi putting a good fight in. Molly Thompson Smith, not as high up as she would have necessarily wanted off that one. Then down the bottom, make Ataki with a slip early on. So that is our 26 and how they finished off. Let's look at the men because this is where things get tight. Jesse Gruper tops and in first position due to count back. Luto Potaja also tops. Taisei Homer 44, Alex Megos 41 plus, and then Yannick Floe, Colin Duffy, Philip Schenk, and Yoshiyuki Ugata all on that 41 plus. Hamish MacArthur as well at the moment in 8, 41 plus, and Sebastian Halenka yeah, 8, so they're, 41 plus. They're all genuinely tied yeah yeah so that'll be a if that stays that way which <coughs> in theory it should it's going to be a, a big final it is indeed well lots of athletes could potentially take place and compete tomorrow we'll wait for the confirmed results they tend to come out about 15 20 minutes after the comps finish just the uh, guaranteed results so we'll wait for that do keep an eye on the ifsc app as well that can tell you well, what a competition. Thank you so much, Campbell, for Thank joining me. Thank you for me. having me. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> well, hopefully we will see you in semi-finals, not in the commentary box here in the future. Yes, fingers crossed. I think next one, I've got my fingers crossed for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, as our crowds start to depart, we will too. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central European time for the finals for the men and women. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Have a lovely evening, everyone.